Chiefs to the Saints. We have some unique game tonight. I cover the topics others don't cover, but I think it's mostly because they can't think of it. You know, they can't think of the topic. You feel me? Today we're speaking of how the human female will utilize religion not to get closer to God, but to fool you, to manipulate you, to escape being under your rules and regulations. Yes, she doesn't want to follow a real patriarch. She wants to follow the heavenly father. You ever see how many older women are single, have no man, and they're waiting until God gives them a man? Oh, God's going to give you a man, is he? Why he ain't give you a man already? When did it become God's fault that you don't have a man? Was it God's fault when you had that one night stand? When do we decide what's God's fault and God's responsibility? Women with regards to all of these religions, belief systems, whether it's astrology or anything else, all of them are mostly illusions to fool you. Let's get into it. First, let us start with our tradition. Show love to those who show love to you. So may I acknowledge by a super chat, shout out to ISB. He writes, peace to the saints. May I catch this on the Sassin website? Absolutely. Looking forward to the knowledge. Thank you, OG. Also loving the black box. Indeed, it is a masterwork. I spoke with a young man today who had a consultation and he was just really moved by the black box. And I think many of you will be. I encourage you to check it out. You can get a copy by typing in the black box, Marquette Burton on amazon.com or going to the sassin.com. That's T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. And you can get a low cost ebook or audio book. Shout out to one mic at a time supporting the work as well. Appreciate you. And I also acknowledge those who are supporting and cutting out the Google Corporation in the process, which is in fact a censorship corporation. Now I acknowledge uh, Warren, who just became a member at thesassin.com. Shout out to Matthew. He writes, Peace of the Saints, tuning in from SAC. Uh, shout out to the Bay Area section. I also acknowledge Mr. Manuel. He writes, peace to the saints. Also, shout to Roland. He was the first person to come in via Cash App. Now let's go ahead and get to this game. And also, for those of you who have the how to create and monetize your own app course, you'll be getting some new uploads. Uh, I got a, a pre-record from today that I'll be sharing. And also, I'll do a live session next week for those who have the how to create and monetize your own app course, which is inclusive of websites, mobile applications, etc. This is something that I am expert in. So we'll be doing that. It's great because it's a practicum course. So it's not just a lecture. It's you actually participating and really getting your hands into the earth and you know growing up something. So I highly recommend it. I think it's one of my best offerings is just that it's, you know, it's very specialized. Not everyone wants to go into the software business. Shout out to EJ writes, peace to the saints. And again, when I take my break, EJ, if you'd remind me, I do want to show your product. It, uh, slipped my mind last time, but we got to show that product. It's a phenomenal product. I haven't even opened it because I want to do an unpackaging. So they're the major monotheistic religions, Islam, Judaism, Christianity. Judaism you're less familiar with because those who follow Judaism uh, suggest that you have to have divine blood. You have to be of their blood. God chose a certain minority of people. You're not of them. So really, you cannot be a Jew. Uh, you can convert, but you know they believe it's a blood thing. So we'll, we'll leave that to the side. We'll go ahead and talk about Christianity and Islam. As you know, I give consultations on various things, whether it's business, might be on image, might be on uh, how do you get promoted. You might have a situation, even a beef, and we can work out strategy. Might be about romance, might be about marriage, might be about divorce. We talk about many things. I remember early on, there was a woman who had reached out for a consultation, very good looking Puerto Rican woman, lived, lives in the Northeast, very good looking. And she had experienced some trauma in childhood, and you know many have, unfortunately. And undoubtedly, that trauma was holding her back, and she uses religion as a cloak. She uses religion to cover over many things so that she doesn't actually have to deal with the truth of her mindset, her arrested maturity, her inability to trust and follow a man. 
a man on earth. Not a man in the sky, not an imaginary man, not a man whose characteristics she makes up, but a man here on earth. Let me tell you, ladies and saints, that you on earth are the closest embodiment to God that your woman should have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she should praise and worship you and she should obey you. And if she is religious, it's because you're religious and she learns her religion through you. Jeez, Mark, why isn't that extreme? No, it's not. If you're the leader in the household, how could that possibly be extreme? You're the leader. So how could you have a religion that is divergent from her religion? It wouldn't make sense. At that point, she wouldn't be following you. Here's what happens in some households where the woman purports to be a Christian or even purports to be a Muslim. This is how you know they really don't believe and they really don't follow. For example, you saw me on uh, the Whatever podcast some time ago. There was a young lady immediately to my left, loudmouth, uh, white, liberal, or not liberal, doesn't say she's liberal, but she she is in, a, in essence liberal. She says that she's conservative and says that she's a Christian woman and she uses the cloak of Christianity. When in actual fact, anytime you see, or not anytime, but many times you see a woman in front of a microphone or you see a woman preaching the gospel, these are women who want attention. Some women take off their clothes to uh, get attention and some women put on the clothes of religion to get attention. Hell, even some men do it. So the woman immediately to the left of me, I met her fiance, uh, who is a nice young man, very pleasant, uh, fairly gentle, straightforward guy, cool cat. I only encountered him for a few minutes, but there was no doubt that between the two of them, I think she was also older than him, which is a curious thing we should get into. But between the two of them, she was clearly the, the more outspoken, stronger willed, the individual who seeks the spotlight. And in that spotlight, you know, religion is one of the easiest things to utilize in the spotlight. I'll tell you why. Because it largely requires no real knowledge, experience, or intelligence. Marquette, are you insulting all of the preachers of the world? Kind of, yeah, sure. I'll tell you why. If you were to be an expert in geopolitics, you would have had to have read a multitude of works. If you would purport to be an expert on Christianity or uh, you want to be a Bible thumper, you can get by just having read the Bible, whether you understand it or not. And clearly many of them don't understand it or they just don't accept it. You find all these female preachers, even though in the Bible it says that a woman should not usurp authority for a man. She should not be a teacher to men. Rather, she should learn in silence. And in fact, it specifically states that she should seek counsel from her husband. She should seek understanding from her husband. Huh? Now, let me point out to you how you know that this stuff is very fraudulent. If you're in the West, or let's say in the United States, or even in Canada specifically, consider this. Uh, mind you, um, no promotion. I know people who are like trying to get their podcast going. They're in the comments trying to promote. I empower my moderators. If there's anyone who mentions another content creator, block them immediately. Anyways, so you have these women in the West whether you're in Canada, Germany, United States, if you ever see, you know, you take a look out at like a, a large gathering of people in the West, whether you're at a mall, you're at Times Square or any such place, ask yourself, which of these women, by mere sight of them, can I tell are Christian? None. You can't tell any of them are Christian. Why? Because they're so worldly. They live in the world in the exact same way that non-Christians live. They have no mark of religion. Religion is on their tongue. It is not in their garb. It is not in their conduct. Huh? There are just a handful of Christian sects where people actually try to follow. And when they try to follow, what we do in our sick, wicked society is we call them cults or we demonize them. Because mainstream Christianity has fallen off so bad that we virtually have synagogues of Satan. Yes. Rainbow flag on the church. Female preacher in the church. Gay pastor in the church. We're going to get to Islam as well. But when you look at the Christian woman today, you could never tell that she's Christian. In fact, you can even look at a number of women who engage in adult films. They're wearing a chain, and on that chain, what does it have on that chain? It has a cross, which is the a, a Christian symbol, apparently. I think that occurred in you know the later stages of 
the development of Christianity apparently wasn't there at the beginning. My understanding is that there was a multitude of criminals who also laid upon a cross, not just Jesus the Christ, but we know many stories have been rewritten and human beings are not very trustworthy. They're quite deceitful and unreliable. I will be releasing the Book of Dark Truths. I have decided to release it uh, to the public. There may be a couple pieces I'll take out. And the reason you will be able to purchase that is because it might be my last testament. You heard me before they take me out. And I want people to be able to look at this world and see what is actually there because you have been lied to and you are being lied to on a regular basis. Huh? Now, number one, uh, shout out to King Colonels. He writes, Men, I purchased the Black Box audiobook from Marquette. Almost done with it. It's amazing. And it really does read like a movie. And the best of all is that they're all true stories. Shout out to Idris, writes, The game is flowing today, and I'm just getting started. Now, you look at these women and you do not see God in them. You do not see the knowledge of Christ within them. You do not see them executing on what is written. And often I have conversations with these women, whether they approach me for relationship advice or they tell me they're interested in a guy and they want my opinion or they are saying, hey, my husband said this or told me to do this, or they're single and they're looking for a man or they're waiting for God to bring them a man. And I ask them a couple questions. And I get a couple curious responses that are deeply concerning. Here's an example of one. You may have even heard this before. Talking to one young lady, she says that she's a Christian. I say, okay, fantastic. Well, tell me this. What if your husband or your boyfriend says something that you don't quite agree with? What are you going to do? She says, well, if it contradicts the Bible, I'm not going to follow it. I say, okay, so you're about to follow this Bible, which you know sounds like a fantastic idea. If you're a Christian, you're going to follow the Bible. It seems reasonable. But if your interpretation of the Bible says that your husband is not following the word of the Bible, then you are going to part or diverge from what your husband is saying or doing or instructing you to do. She says, yes, that's right, Marquette. That's correct. Oh, okay. So you're disobedient. You're disobedient. Yes, yes, you're disobedient. Oh, and furthermore, love, um, how do you know your interpretation is correct? How do you know your interpretation is any better than your husband's interpretation? She says, well, what if he doesn't follow in the same way? Well, why would you marry a guy who doesn't believe in the Bible the way you believe in the Bible? And if he's supposed to lead, be the leader, shouldn't he be smarter than you? Shouldn't he be a better guide, more knowledgeable? Huh? Shouldn't he be a man of discipline? So the moment at which you find a reason to disobey him, that didn't come from the Bible. That came from you. And you're using the Bible as an excuse because it wouldn't be sensible if you're a devout Christian woman to marry a man who's not a devout Christian man. It wouldn't be sensible as a woman who purports to be religious to marry a man to whom you don't want to be subject or submit to, whom you don't view as a leader. That wouldn't make any sense, right? So if you're with a man and you're not going to follow his lead, that's because off rip you wanted to be the leader. You thought you were running things. That's why you find women today, they get men who are younger than them. Why? Because they want to be able to manipulate them. Just like that young lady that was with me on whatever podcast, she's a couple years older than her boyfriend. Now, here's the thing. We know women develop language skills earlier than men. As women develop language skills earlier than men, they also have the ability to manipulate men. And they're so good at it because it's inherent. Huh? They don't even have to practice it. Men, we got to get game from our old heads to know how to manage these chicks. Chicks will know how to manipulate a man, even if he's older than her, even if he's smarter than her. It's damn near a natural skill for them. But you and I, we got to go get some game and get some ism. So when a chick is dealing with a younger guy, she is doing that specifically for the purpose of controlling and manipulating and dominating that man. Full stop, point blank, period. But a real female who is feminine, she is never going to seek a man who is below her or who is her equal. She wants a man who is above her. She wants to be able to look up to that man literally and figuratively. That's why women say they want a tall man. Huh? They want a strong man. They want a man that is their superior in some way. But it's only the broken broads that go ahead and do this. It's the broken ones. 
that want to go ahead and get a guy that they can dominate. Huh? And you might be saying, Marquette, are the Muslim women any better? No, not really. No, not really. Let's talk about it. Number one, consider the fact that in the Quran, it states that a man can have more than one wife, up to four, if he would treat the wives equally. That's what it says in the Quran. If you are a Muslim woman, then you should follow the Quran, right? But what do they do? They say, oh, well, it says if you can treat them equally. So if you can't treat the wives equally, then you can't have multiple wives. So really, no man should have multiple wives. Oh, dear, you're lying. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if the Quran wanted no man to have multiple wives, it would have never mentioned having multiple wives. It specifically mentions that in Al-Nasa. Huh? If the Quran did not want any man to have multiple wives, it would have never given the example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If the Quran wanted every man to have one wife, it would have simply said, every man for him is one wife. So what the women do is they take the word of God and they reinterpret it to benefit themselves. Not they think it's to benefit themselves. It's, it's to appeal to their base emotions of selfishness, of jealousy, all those negative things. You see, women don't really know what benefits them. Huh? Yeah, they don't really know. They think it benefits them to go cut up their body and get all these surgeries to make their chest bigger, make their lips bigger, and all of these things. And some of these women die on the surgeon's table while the surgeon tries to perform the work of God. Imagine a human being with a knife thinking that they can perfect what God has already created. Amazing. That's the problem is that the women don't know what's good for them. Huh? I'm going to go ahead and take a pause for the cause right now. Acknowledge some of the people supporting the work. Uh, shout out to uh, T supporting the work via Cash App. Also, shout out to Mr. Harris supporting the work. Appreciate you. Uh, also, acknowledge via PayPal. Shout out to Victor, writes tuition, peace of saints. He's very consistent. Shout out to Mr. McBride. He writes, Saint, I've always wondered what made you take Shahada in 2014? Also, could you upload the live stream? Uh, the Livingston roast from last week onto Patreon. Can you please email that second request to Jason at Marquettism.com and we will get that uploaded for you. I apologize for the tardiness. Thank you for the reminder. In terms of taking Shahada, uh, number one, I found the practice of Islam to be something that provided greater peace. You see the practice of Islam. And also I studied it in two ways. Firstly, when I was in university, I studied it as a political thing. Then after that, I experienced it as a spiritual thing. Now, we observe that the Muslims, they don't practice very well, whether they're male or female. We find that some of them are foolish, primitive, and savage. But what is written in the Quran and the daily practices of the Muslim, you know, it really brings great peace and discipline to a man, to a human being. And that is why I took Shahada in 2014 after great study. And you will notice one major difference between myself and others who might purport to be a Muslim, like, say, Sneeko or Andrew Tate. Sneeko is a closeted homosexual, and we've observed this many times. And Tate is still, you know, smoking cigars, drinking alcohol. You know, I'm perhaps no better than either of them. But if I am going to wear my vices publicly, I am not going to associate myself with Islam and drag that down and be a bad representative. I think that is the difference. So the reason I took Shahada is because it's something that gives peace. And that is something that I wanted to be a part of. But you'll notice that I never promote religion. In fact, I only promote this ism, sassin or nothing. You dig? And I'll tell you one thing, you can read inside of your Quran and your Quran will not tell you how to manage yourself on social media. You can read inside of your Quran, your Quran will not tell you how to deal with the wicked governments of our day. There are some things that you need an elaboration on and that this ism is for today. You did. <laughs> Look at someone right here writes, Andrew doesn't drink, at least not on camera. See, you're lying. You're absolutely lying, my dear boy. Don't lie. And that's precisely why I tell you all uh, to get the book of dark truths when I release it, because it's going to open your eyes up because human beings are so inclined to lie. There's so few things we can trust when people favor you. They will make excuses for you. When people favor you, they will exaggerate your merits. When people dislike you, they will make negative lies about you. 
I've seen psychopaths on the internet who dislike me because I promote not drinking. I promote exercising every day. I promote not smoking. And I live those things on a regular basis. I've seen some of those liars online say, Marquette's 5'7". What? That's ludicrous. Then I've seen people who favor me say, Marquette's 6'5". That's also not true. And the truth is always somewhere in the middle. But the fact of the matter is that human beings are not reliable or principled for the most part. It is among it is upon men to be the principled leaders. It is the women who need to be the followers. Huh? Talk about it. Let's, let's, he, he writes, I don't know if he does. I'm just here talking. See, don't do that. Shut up and sit down and listen. And you might say sometimes, Marquette, why are you harsh every now and then? Mind you, I do display kindness on a regular basis, but we're in an era where we are past compromise. We are past being soft and nice because the world is burning right now. We're on the brink of global warfare right now. Our children are not safe. Imagine you're a little boy and they're telling you you might grow up and become a woman. We are in times that are dire. We're allowing our children to be at risk. We are beyond the idea of being moderate and compromising and playing nice. We are in serious times. And it takes serious men to stand up. I'm a man suited for this time. That's why I don't have time to play with people. To the young man who said something foolish, I appreciate you being here. But if you don't have anything meaningful, intelligent, or positive to say, feel free to sit down and shut up. There's nothing wrong with being silent sometimes. Huh? Just got to be real out here. Now, let me acknowledge the folks who came in via Super Chat. Thank you all for supporting the work. Shout out to DKB. May I also acknowledge none of the above. He writes, she don't believe in Jesus. Why she got a Jesus piece? Exactly. In fact, all the rappers have Christian chains, right? They have those necklaces with the Christian cross on it. And we know none of them really believe. They rap endlessly about killing the multitude. They rap endlessly about promiscuous women. They don't believe. Shout out to uh, Final Wave Feminism supporting the work. Appreciate you. May I also acknowledge Darius coming in with the support uh, two times. He writes, 21 Savage and Nardo Wick writes, who wants smoke me? Who is that? And he also writes, Kaka and Tom Brady were des- described as being too perfect by their wives. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that absolutely crazy? Described as being too perfect That's the wickedness within them. I'm not going to lie to you. When they wrote that story of Adam and Eve, perhaps it was not a literal story. Perhaps it was a story about the idea of women being inclined to complain, to find problems, to find something wrong. Maybe it was about that concept. And psychology reveals that women have high levels of being neurotic meaning having negative ideation, finding problems with things, even when there's not a problem. Maybe that's what that was about. Maybe that's why you'll often hear women say, oh, I didn't like him. He's a nice guy. (laughs) What does that mean? He's easy to exploit. What does that mean? He's kind hearted. What does that mean? All the things I said I want, I actually don't want. That's what that means. And that's why I told you before, they don't know what benefits them precisely why they need a father that is going to tell them which guy is worth spending their life with. Shout out to Darius. He writes, Uh, And therefore, they left. Do men have to dumb themselves down and thug themselves down to be able to keep women today? Passport. No, it's just a matter of selection. And that's why I'm the saint and the sinner, right? I can tell you what the best path is for your long-term happiness with a woman. And every now and then, we just need it in our life, right? You just need to bend one of them over. That's the center part. I tell you, if you're going to go ahead and lay down with some low women and it gets like that, make sure you roll that condom back to the serial numbers, you dig? And also don't allow her allow her into your life to ruin it because that's what they will do promiscuous women, low-class women, poor women are in fact dangerous. Dangerous. So stay away from them. Uh, Shout out to Stephen. He comes in by PayPal. He writes, Exodus 2110 literally gives instructions on how to have multiple wives, right? It's funny how things get changed around, don't they? You remember the Mormons used to say, you can have multiple wives. And then the Mormons pulled it back and said, oh, we don't mean that. Why? Because it didn't agree with the American law. The Book of Mormon also used to say that black people are of the devil. Yes, that is a fact. And then they changed it and took that out as well, which is why, again, I remind you, you're going to need the Book of Dark Truth so you can understand this wicked world around us because there's a lot of lies going on. Stephen writes via PayPal. He writes, quote, 
if he marries another woman, he must not deprive the first one of her food, clothing, and marital rights. Fair enough, right? Fair enough. I can't hate that. Sounds completely reasonable. Now, you know, the funny thing is a lot of chicks will say, oh, you know, I don't believe in polygyny. Well, okay, you don't believe in polygyny, but you're dealing with a guy who you know has a girlfriend or you're dealing with a guy who has a baby mama. Well, you're in polygyny, love. He has multiple women. That's what that is. And it gets even messier because a lot of females are dealing with guys who might have multiple women, but there's no commitment. You see, polygyny is the neat practice wherein you marry the woman and then you have to honor her by supporting, taking care of, providing for, and protecting her. But these goofball harlots rather lie to themselves and go ahead and, you know, act like they're not in a polygynous situation dealing with Tyrone, Ray Ray, and Pookie, knowing damn well they're in a polygynous situation. And that's another thing I describe in the book of Dark Truth is that delusion and duality, how certain frames make things acceptable. You you know, we're going to get deep out here. And thank you to those supporting the work. I definitely appreciate it. Shout out to Markel, writes tuition via PayPal. Shout out to the real ones. Now I also acknowledge Davion, writes Peace of the Saints, tuition. Shout out to Blaine. He writes Peace of the Saints, great show. Shout out to Brandon. He writes tuition. Shout out to Orion. He writes Soaking Up This Ism. Thank you for the game. Sir, it's truly a pleasure of mine. I get a lot of women who purport to be religious. And the reason that I attract these women is because what they understand of an upright man I represent, no drinking, no alcohol, no sexcapades for the most part, Uh, you know, no BS, right? But here's the thing, when they get with a guy like me and they realize that there has to be rules followed, that there is an order to my life, that I have a way, all of a sudden they're like, hold on, I don't want to play this game anymore. Yeah, they want to dictate. Yes, they want to dictate. That's the problem. They don't realize that there's a level of discipline. Like if you find a man who exercises every day and doesn't drink, doesn't do drugs, doesn't smoke cigarettes and never has, that's a disciplined man. He's going to have high standards of himself and of you as well if you're under him or within his household. And they do not want to abide by that. Huh? No, they don't. They're inconsistent beings, which I can't blame them for in as much as women have cycles, which is to say there's a biological process that causes, you know, changes and variation in their moods and in their biology on a regular basis. So how could you possibly expect them to be consistent? Their biology prevents them from being consistent. huh? And know this, if you are a man who is straightforward and consistent, when a woman comes to deal with you, Well, she's going to have some adjusting to do. Do they really want to adjust? Most of them, they don't. Folks, I'll go ahead and give you some time to send in your comments, questions as we wind down. Damn, we got this cat is still talking about Tate. He writes, I'll be honest, I'm here from Tate's culture. I don't know what Tate, I don't know what that means. He writes, listening to the saint for the first time. Okay, respect. I mean, no disrespect. I genuinely thought AT no longer drinks. Listen. I'm not here to disparage anyone. He's a very successful man. I'm proud of him. I hope that he's able to, um, you know, live his best life, so to speak. And, you know, he's able to get out of all of these legal entanglements. But we all know consistently you can find footage of him and his brother and others consuming alcohol and cigarettes. And I'm not here judging. I'm just saying that's precisely the reason that I don't represent religion. I represent the ism. I'm not here as a pastor. So that's what I'm pointing out to you. And in the book of James, as I often recount to you, it states in the Bible, let not many of you be teachers, for teachers are held to a higher standard. Yet so many would step out as teachers because teachers get to be at the front of the classroom. So many of us would be better off as students as we are limited in knowledge and our discipline is also not there. It is our own narcissism that makes us want to step out in front of others and try to be the example so that others would look up to us. I always remind that you should look for the reluctant leader, the one who says, you know what, I really just rather live my life, but I'm stepping into leadership because no one else has or because there's a job that needs to be done. And as a man, I'm not going to sit here and live in a broken society. That's what you should look for. When you search through a lot of these people's backgrounds, you'll you'll see that consistently. 
they've sought out the spotlight. They've always wanted to be an actor or a model, or they went on reality TV shows, all of these things that show their life was guided by trying to seek your attention and approval, not trying to help anything outside of themselves. So that's why I'm suspicious of these people. And when I say these people, I'm talking about your influencers, your celebrities, your actors, your models, all those things. Those are not places we should look for guidance. We're in a sick time wherein, you know, God or goodness, doesn't matter if you don't believe in God, goodness is replaced. You know, the worship of God, the worship of merit and goodness is, is replaced by the worship of beauty or the worship of youth or the worship of uh, sex appeal and celebrities who are brainless. So. That's where we're at today, and that needs to change, and it's only going to happen when men stand up. May I acknowledge Victor came back via PayPal. He writes, you have a window audience. He better pay tuition. The ism here is priceless. <laughs> You're a funny guy. Peace of saints. How you doing, boss? Good, good. Oh, you have a lot of questions. Okay, no kidding. If you, if you got some questions, you can hop in that uh, white seat. There's a mic right there if you want to tell me. Yeah, talk to me, boss. What's on your mind? What questions you got for me? I don't know if that mic is uh, working. Can anyone hear him? Guys, confirm if you can uh, actually hear what he's saying. Talk to me. To my standards? A woman should live up to her man's standards. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. G give me a second. Let me let me make sure your mic's on because I think people want to hear your opinion. Am I in the neighborhood? Yeah. No, I live in Inspirata. Um, my brother lives right here. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I have no clue where Inspirata is. Is that a, a neighborhood or? Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's by uh, Saint Rose. By, by Raiders practice facility. All right. Okay, guys, uh, can you hear through that mic? He said now it's on, we can hear. Okay, fantastic. I'm just going to lower it a little bit. Okay, go ahead. Uh, hit me with your question, boss. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just by um, your statement saying that um, a woman should live up to your standards. Her right. man. Her yeah. man. Not, not yes. any woman. Yeah, yeah. A woman yeah. who chooses a man yes. should... Follow his way. Yes. Um, I I just think that's very old and very. Um, you will never you will never find nobody unless you will find um you you're looking for a maid, basically. A maid. That route. Yeah. Um, Let me address the first piece that you said, which I think is very meaningful. You said that's very old. Because something is old, does that mean that it's bad? Do you have grandparents? Are they bad now because they're old? So I do have grandparents. Do they become and, bad um, when they got old? Um, no, I love them. Dearly. Actually, my grandmother just passed. I, I love them dearly. Yes. But um, the things that she does is not good. We have technology now. We have we've um, always you realize information. You realize we've this always is, had technology, right? No. <laughs> You, no, you realize greatest, technology has always existed, this right? This is the greatest time ever to be alive. Do you realize every time was always the greatest time to be alive as a human being? Do you understand my point? Yes, but right now yes. is, even the, is even a better time to be alive. Do you think that maybe in 10 years, someone in your position might oh, say the I same thing? So. Oh, God, right. I hope so. So what I'm saying to you is that when you use technology as an explanation for this being a great time, technology is has always existed, whether it, during the caveman era, they discovered the wheel or whatever the case yeah, was. Absolutely. But just as you can identify the good things about technology, I can explain to you how things like child pornography have been proliferated greatly. And without technology, it wouldn't even be a concept. And even these perverts who engage in such things are only able to collaborate and do it because of technology, whereas otherwise they'd be isolated and separated. Absolutely. There are always negative cogs against something so resounding. You're, what you're doing right now, you are speaking to 
possibly millions of people, right? On the comfort of, it seems like your office or your home, right? This is not possible 20 years ago. Not possible, excuse me, not 20 years. Yeah, it is possible 20 years ago. 50 years ago. It is possible 50 years, but, but go on. Yeah, but what you're doing right now is absolutely, well, not at this level of 4K, 8K resolution that you're doing at right yeah. now, probably. But this is absolutely amazing. It's amazing for what you're doing right now. So there's always positives and negatives right. of every single uh, advancements of technology. Now, I'm not, I am Right, not so real quick, that, I, I want that, you to that, at that, least see right, that right. the point was that I drew your eyes to the negative side, yeah. which is to point out that technology oh, is not yeah. an absolute positive, just as things being old is not an absolute negative. So both of those arguments don't hold water. Yeah. You, you said yeah. this time is the greatest time ever because we have so much technology. Well, it turns out that in America, life, life expectancy is lower now. With more technology, it's actually lower. There's also places in the world that have less technology that have higher life expectancy so technology is not the determinant in terms of human health human happiness on that that that, that stat is wrong actually we're living a lot longer who's now. we you're talking about americans yes americans are living a lot longer now yeah you can look it up we are living a lot longer now um as opposed to my great grandparents you know you can probably see it you know pictures look at pictures of your granddad when he was in high school he looked like a 40 year old you know, <laughs> but we look relatively young. We are healthier now. We eat healthier now. Maybe not the demographic of people that we normally hang around, but us as a generation, we are living a lot longer. Yeah. What I'm what I'm explaining to you is that when you identify technology as a absolute good, mm -hmm. I'm pointing out to you that even as technology progresses. So, like, for example, this year's 2024. Yeah. There's more technology in 2024 than there was in 2021. Would you agree? There's more. Absolutely. Better technology, yes. advanced yes. technology. Yes. Okay, correct. So I'm looking right now, as you asked me to pull up the statistics, and this is what I was referencing. In 2021, which is the past, yeah. less technology, life expectancy in the United States was 76 years. Okay. Excuse me, today it's 76 years. Um, in 2020, give me a second. This is one sec. And today it's 76 years. I'm sorry. And in the past, it was 78 years. In 2013, right? So a decade back, 2013, a decade back, mm -hmm. it was 78 years. What website are you referring to? It's called Google. You no, know, what, what's the website are you referring to, though? It's Google lists. Is yeah, World Bank. Worldbank.org or .com? Well, the, the source is the World Bank. You've heard of the World Bank, right? It's a reputable institution for data. Not really. It's still You sports. don't trust the World Bank? No. I, I, I trust. So you think that the World Bank is fudging the statistics on United States life expectancy? Um, I, I don't trust websites that are looking for uh, um, uh, statistical reviews that is not done by peer review researchers. So therefore, so I you look at a dot org website. That is all. Are you aware that a dot org can be purchased by anyone, whereas a dot gov cannot? So a dot gov is inherently more reliable? Yeah, it's, it's actually more reliable than a dot com, though. So if you're yeah, dot gov is, but a dot org is not. I can purchase a dot org. I have, in fact, purchased many dot org websites yes, before. Yes, but it's, it's, it is more reliable. Okay. It's, it's so, so you don't believe that the life expect expectancy in the United States has been declining? Has been declining? Yes, it has been Since, declining. No, 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 no. Life expectancy has been increased since. So, what I'm telling you, yes. if you look at 2010, for example, which is a while back, 2010, life expectancy in the United States was 78.54 years. Then you look at 2021, it's down to 76.33 years. It's declining. That's in a matter of 12 years. Correct. So and I'm talking about, can we look between uh, now 
and 1950s. And then look, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, but Mike, look- but it, it would go along with your argument if the idea is that technology is the driving force of human happiness, progress, that and was, health, and all these just things. One second, that was just one second that, that just popped in my head at the time. Okay, it was tech, te- was te- technology. right? Because I'm just saying, because according I'm in to the technology world, that's yeah. According to your logic, we should have the highest life expectancy should always be moving upward. Yeah, but it's not. We are though. No, yeah. no, it's not. The day da- I just told you, the data is showing that it is not. Oh, wow. G- give me a second. Your mic just cut for some strange reason. One sec. Give me a sec, guys. I'm going to get him a, a, pro- a proper podcast mic right now. Uh, go ahead, talk into that mic. Testing. Okay, fantastic. You're coming in uh, beautifully. If uh, everyone would just uh, confirm that they're able to hear the gentleman loud and clear, uh, then we will go on from there. Okay, so we addressed the, the, the bit on technology. Now, you also mentioned such and such is old, right? So like the views are archaic is what you're suggesting. But in actual fact, that's a logical fallacy. You're familiar with that as a log- logical fallacy, right? Appeal tra- to tradition. I believe the, the the thought is archaic that you, um, a man, should uh, have its have its wife or girlfriend or whomever partner live up to their standards. If if this happens one party will be significantly significantly depressed and this is not what you want it will lead depressed? up to depressed it would lead up to divorce or um a long 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 term of of obligation relationship obligation relationship is that i have to stay with him because i know no one else and that's it. <laughs> okay. And a, probably a lot of people out there so can l- let's take the piece resonate about divorce. That. You said having a woman follow a man, meaning mm-hmm. the man is this, the leader, he's the patriarch, will lead to divorce. Well, no, no, that, that's that's not not what I said. I'm sorry if I'm starting a little bit. Uh, I was in a car accident about like five years ago. I was in a coma, so that's that's why for a little bit. So I apologize in a, ahead of time. Okay. So you do you think that you're having cognitive issues right now in general? Oh no. No, okay. No. You think it just impacted your speech? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it definitely did. Absolutely. But not yeah. your cognition. No, 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 no. No. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Now, you did actually state that it would lead to more divorces. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the Data does not support that. The divorce rate is higher now that women are liberated, whereas the divorce rate was lower when women would follow the lead of men. So as you had referenced 1950, for example, the divorce rate in 1950 was extraordinarily lower than it is today, which would suggest that when women are following men as patriarchs, that they remain in marriages at greater rates. Yes, it it actually, it's... um actually does support what I'm actually does support what I'm saying is because women are actually I wouldn't say just to put it so uh 
lightly, but my vernacular is not all that well. <laughs> but I say women are getting smarter. They're realizing their worth. And they are saying that I really don't have to put up with this crap no more. That they are, due to the internet and due to meeting more people, I'm able to see so much more that's out there in the world that I don't have to be boggled down with this BS type man or this guy who cheats or this man who doesn't really provide. And so they're able now to file for a divorce or that may have, have be the male file for a divorce. Okay. So you said women are getting smarter. You know what? It turns out that's also not true. Women are becoming more educated, so they're having higher levels of educational attainment, exactly, especially yeah, yeah. at the university yeah. level. Unfortunately, yeah. education doesn't make you smarter as yeah, IQ it, excuse is fixed. Excuse my, uh, my generality. Yeah. That, yeah. So education doesn't make you smarter. IQ is, in fact, fixed. What education does is it might arm you with some perspectives, uh, some strategy, greater understanding, and particularly knowledge. Education will give you knowledge. Now, in terms of smart, if you want to reference smart, men are smarter than women. Uh, all of the data indicates that. I was just recently speaking of this, the fact that when you look at the bell curve of IQ, the distribution, you find that men are more represented on the extremes, which is saying extreme lack of intelligence, and then on the other side, also known as genius, men are overrepresented there. That's why we're the inventors, we're the risk takers, we're the ones that come up with philosophy and things like that. I just so men are smarter. You don't get to disagree. It's the fact. No, I just uh, it's it's not a fact. It's because that Wait, woman hasn't you, you had said no, IQs are not a fact. It's not necessarily a fact because woman hasn't had the privilege to do those things. So you're looking at. You're looking at those. Wait, are you stats. talking about IQ or are you talking about the accomplishments? Let's talk about IQ. Okay, so okay IQ first, test. my sister just got into Stanford. Okay. She lives here. All right. And got into Stanford with a full paid for ride. Her name is Gabrielle Rosado. I don't uh -huh. know if I if I should even just say that. Well, but you, you said it. So I know, I know. It's, it's up there. But anyway, I'm so proud of her. I I'm I'm really glad I just told 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 the world. But yeah. anyway, um, and so at that time, or at any time, men did have to uh, uh, acquire everything because they were the only ones in charge of everything. Women we're did talking not have about IQ, though. We're talking about IQ. IQ is tested. So IQ yes. tests reveal that men typically have higher IQs. Currently, no, they no, do not. Currently, yes, they do. Women have higher levels of educational attainment men have higher IQs. So if you use the word smart, you'd be correct in saying men are smarter. I have a hard time believing that after you also had a hard you also had a hard time believing the statistics from the World Bank. Yeah, also believing that my 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 own sister, my very own sister got a full ride in your, your own sister could be smarter than me or smarter than you or smarter than both of us put together that would be called in the data set an outlier so we're not suggesting oh. that your sister is not smart as an individual she could in fact be a genius but if you look at that category of humankind called genius there's a higher number of males in that iq category because males have higher iqs that's what I'm saying. L let me ask you this. Why do you think that is? That males have higher IQs? Yeah. Some questions are not worth answering. It doesn't matter. It is what it is, and it is not changeable. No, let's... IQ question, is what you're born with. Every Everything is worth asking why. So let's... let's no, ask no, everything is not worth asking why. I could ask, why are there flies that come into this building? No, but well, they're attracted to the beautiful lights, you know, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. But where are you going with this? Go ahead. Talk to me. So I'm saying that the reason why this uh, stat remains so highly is because it's brought on by men. Men has been ruling. This wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Did you grow up with your father? Yes. My father, my mother, and, they've been married. What ethnicity is your father? I'm sorry? What ethnicity is your father? Uh, Cuban. Your father is 100% Cuban. Yeah. And what ethnicity is your mother? Same. 
They're both Cuban. Yes. And they fled Cuba to come here or they were born here? No, they didn't flee. They came here. From, Actually, they brought they came they were brought here, but my grandmother, my grandmother uh kind of fled. Okay, your grandmother fled Cuba. Yeah. Okay. And brought both of your parents here to the West Coast. Yeah. Gotcha. Was your father a religious man? Yes. What, very re- much so. what religion did he claim? Catholic. Catholic. Yeah. Did he raise you as a Catholic? Yes. So you went to tried. Ma- tried. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what does that mean? No, no. It means that I I don't follow um, no religion. Okay. When when did you stop? Probably, uh, I would say junior year. In college, high school, college, yeah. Oh, in, in university, year. yeah. So you felt like you were a devout Catholic up until university. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fascinating. And why'd you stop? Um, after when I met so many diverse people and um, different backgrounds, different stories and cultures. Gotcha. And um, yeah. And would you consider yourself heterosexual? Yes. Okay. So you're a heterosexual male. I don't know why I had to think about that. Yeah, I don't I don't know either, my boy. That that's on you. <laughs> I guess okay. yeah. Because people never really asked me that. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So so you're a heterosexual male. Would you consider yourself uh if I got a hundred men together, would you consider yourself one of the stronger of them or about average or below average? In terms of IQ, strength, what? I think that's a I think one, we should take note that you're asking in terms of what. So that's okay. That there's we're noting that. So let's say, would you consider yourself one of the stronger of those men in terms of, let's say, athleticism? Uh, oh, um, above average, average, or below average? I would say um, I'm average. Average. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's say in terms of sexual appeal to women, would you consider yourself above average, average, or below average? Well, this is me. This is how I view myself. So yeah. I think I'm above average. You think you're above average in yes. sexual appeal to women? Yes. Okay. All right. And in terms of intelligence, are you average? Actually, me above average, average, or below average? I believe I'm below average. And then you scoot up a little bit right between average. So I'm like right in the middle of that sector, right there. With intelligence. So, so that is be like a c minus that's that's where i hang out at okay right there so i find it fascinating for example when you ask women about intelli- uh attractiveness they usually use as a measure of attractiveness they'll say mm-hmm. i like a man who's yeah tall or i like a man who's strong yeah consistently right wait wait say it again they ask a man what you ask women about attractiveness they'll often reference a man who's tall or a man who's strong Oh, do I? Well, no, no. When one asks women, women oh, typically oh, yeah, 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 identify yeah. Yeah. height yeah, and, yeah, and yeah, also yeah. strength, yeah. musculature. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You would agree with that? Yeah. Okay. And then so you said you're um, average or, or did you say below average in terms of athleticism? No, I said, um, yeah, average. Yeah. Average. Okay. Yeah. But somehow you said you're above average in terms of appeal to women. No, you said looks. You said looks. I said, sex, I said sexual appeal to women. Oh, sexual appeal to women. Yeah, because that's essentially what looks come down to, which is yeah. the woman being sexually yeah, I, attracted to you. Yeah. That's, that's, okay, so what's your height? Um, 5'10", okay. with nice shoes on. <laughs> no, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't need that. Okay, okay. The 5'10 will do. Okay. Okay, great. What's your, what's your weight? Um, 182. There's no way. Yeah. There's no way. Yeah, 182. No, nah, you're not 182. Yeah. I wish I had a scale here. I can eyeball you and tell that you're not 182 because you're 5'10 and you're very slim. Yeah. And me having boxed, I always had to be yeah. mindful of my, my weight. There's no yeah. way on earth you are 182 Yeah, pounds. I know you. <laughs> it's impossible. When I was in a hospital, when I came out the hospital being fed through the tube, I weighed 144 pounds, the 145 pounds. I'm going to zoom out the camera real quick. And mind you, everyone knows that the camera puts on weight. I'm going to zoom the camera out. I'm going to let everyone take a look at you and tell it and see how much they think you weigh. There's no way you're 180. Give me a second. Let me go zoom this camera. When I'm, when I'm really wet. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> This, this man is wearing a jacket. 
And let me turn this this uh, other light on you. Would you say I weigh? I think we got you lit up a little better. You want to pop the jacket off and take oh. two steps toward me? No, I have a I have a Bahama shirt on. I just came from a little party. Came from a party? You was turning up in a party? I was trying to. Yeah, kind of my party. Yeah, so. I'd say I'd say you probably weigh about one fifty nine, and and I feel very very confident about the one fifty nine. Like I would, if someone was like Marquette, you have to bet your mom's life on this, and you have to be within <laughs> five pounds. I'd say one fifty nine, and say, Mom, no problem. We're going out for dinner tonight. Easily one fifty nine. There's no way on earth that well, you're. I took it as what weight was I aspiring to? to Okay, you got to sit down so we, we can hear you now. Um, what would you say? I took that as what weight am I expiring, aspiring to, to get at? And I said 185. You actually, I thought you said 182. Yeah, yeah, 182. Okay, so you're telling us the weight you aspire to be, not yes. the weight that you are. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> bro, you out here lying, bro. <laughs> My boy out here with zero integrity. <laughs> My boy gave us a grand total of zero integrity. This is crazy <laughs> as hell. Lord Jesus. Okay, so what, what weight are you actually at? Um, actually, I don't know. I haven't weighed myself uh, ever since I left the hospital. <laughs> I Wait, how, how recently did you leave the hospital? Uh, say it was uh, after everything I left. It probably was three years ago. Three years ago total. Gotcha. Because yeah. um, therapy was... Almost two years. Like mental health therapy or mental physical health, therapy. physical. I couldn't walk. I'd learn how to walk, okay. talk again. Were you drunk when that occurred? No. no. Okay. Gotcha. No. Shout out to Malik. He writes, Peace of Saints. Can't wait to get my hands on the book of dark truths. Absolutely. It's going to be a banger. I promise you. Shout out to Walton. He just went crazy with the drip. The man got the Master Troll sweatshirt in four colors off rip, and he got a, a pair of track pants. What's wrong? Walton is the, the drip king. Shout out to Christopher. He writes, tuition. The mark stepped in just to get cooked. Shout out to Trey. He writes, this is why we should beat up simps. Would you consider yourself a simp or, or no? So, what is a simp? Well, I, I think some folks are saying that it's you. Um, I know, but what does that mean? Do you have any sense of what that means? What that might mean? No. Okay. You never heard the term? No. Wow. That, that's, that's unusual. Okay. A simp, simply put, is someone who prioritizes the female and is a sycophant to the female, basically uh, being led and dominated by uh, her. You imitate her and her like taste. That. You give her what she wants. Uh, That's what the simp is. And you do that because you're in a weak position. Oh, well, no, I'm not a simp. No. You don't think so? No. I, I think <laughs> so. Whoever wrote that uh, comment uh -huh. is probably uh either doesn't have a girlfriend or probably does and really can't really find out why he doesn't have a girlfriend but so i'm very very confident in myself okay that's that's always the misunderstanding you see because when guys see me uh-huh i always have a lot of girls around me it's because i'm funny Okay. Now, but you I, ain't got no hoes around you right now, though. Yeah, because I just walked in off the street. Okay. So. <laughs> All right, you ain't got no hoes around you right <laughs> yeah, now, just I, for a record. <laughs> know, yeah. Uh, shout out to Victor. He writes, um, you have a window audience. He better pay tuition. The ism is priceless. Shout out to Anthony. He writes, is the conference two footage the only recommended source for starting a product-based business? I've tried multiple ways to make money with little success, and I'm considering trying a product-based business. No, stick with that business. Tell them keep going. Your first <laughs> business is going to fail. Absolutely. It will fail. But you take from that, <laughs> you learn from that, and you keep going again. Don't what? don't pivot too much. Uh, there you go. Um, I agree with that. That's right. Persistence is important. Conference 2 footage is the place to start. So I highly recommend you get Conference 2 footage because we give you the basics of entrepreneurship. And then once you've decided on a product, I would recommend you get a, a consultation so we can speak about your specific product and getting that to market successfully. That's dirty.
may I acknowledge uh, Robert? He writes, shout out to you, sir. Your great works do not go unnoticed. We are indeed privileged to contribute to and benefit from your time and teachings. Therefore, I shall support and as an example for those that are both old and new to the educational material you so generously dispense. I appreciate that. He writes, wishing you continued prosperity in the areas of health, wealth, and relationships that you value. Quote, men have responsibilities and it should be a pleasure to take care of your responsibilities as a man, end quote. Marquette Devon Burton, I appreciate that. Shout out to the real one. Shout out to Robert really showing up out here. Okay, so here's what I was wrapping in in terms of logic before uh, when we were talking. What I was pointing out to you is that um, if you would identify yourself as one who is below average athletically mm -hmm. and you are not reaching the six foot mark and you're weighing as much as women, you know, you're about yeah. 159, you weigh what a woman weighs. Yeah. So you're a very thin man. You're, you're athletically inferior. Yeah. On a general measure, you are not as appealing to the human female. So as a result, it is necessary that you would have to suck up to her and there's every likelihood that you would be the nice guy because you got to be. And then on this planet Earth, what we find is that the ones who are being nice is mostly because they have to be. But when you have power, you ain't got to be nice. You can really do what you want to do. And chicks are just going to accept it. So hang on two, two, two things about that. Um, to the first thing is that you have to suck up to a, a woman that put in layman's terms, you, you are a chump. Because that's because you just don't believe in yourself. That's why. And that's basically it. It's because you just don't believe in yourself. That 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 falls under if you're big, if you're a basketball player, if you don't even have a job. I know people that 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 work a nine to five that makes twelve thousand dollars a year. And I mean, not twelve, probably probably yeah, a little that, bit. That's kind of crazy. Eighteen thousand dollars a year. Yeah, I don't know what I mean, country you talking about. Twelve thousand dollars. I mean, <laughs> I know some people in Zimbabwe that'll be very very happy. You know, twelve thousand dollars a year. Shout out to Top Raw Studios. He writes, he needs some sass and water to get rid of that propaganda from his soul. It, yeah, he really needs the holy water. But, have you, have, um, shout out to Nigel. He writes, peace of saints. Does anyone know what this male's point is? Okay, so what was your point okay, you about to say? So it's that um, if you just have confidence in yourself. It doesn't matter how tall, how short, how ugly you are. I'm pretty sure everybody out there has seen somebody like, how the hell did he get her? It's because he believed in his damn self. Hell not. It's because That's he why. sucked up to her. If you see a guy who is not as attractive as the female he's with, that is because he sucked up to her and he played nice. If you see a, a strong, good looking, tall, humorous, charismatic man with a good looking woman he has her because they are equally yoked they're equally appealing so they match if you find a guy who doesn't match it's because he had to bend over backwards to get her um shout to jabrizi he writes is he drunk no i'm oh you just buzz i'm very coherent you, you just buzz though but uh you can really examine you know if if have if, you been drinking tonight no i don't drink at all you don't drink at all. No. Have no. you been using any drugs, including no, marijuana? So people don't really believe me. I don't drink at all. I don't never use drugs. Um, uh, yeah. No. I understand why they don't believe. Shout out to Trey. He writes, your language exposes you. He is indeed a simp. They're saying that you are, in fact, no. a simp. Why do you think they think this? Well, I think they think this because they just don't really see me at all in action or they don't really, they don't really know me. Uh, I'll tell you a quick. Okay. So I have epilepsy. Um, had it ever since I was like twelve. This was before the car accident. Oh yeah, before. Okay. Yeah, and so um, and I wasn't driving uh that night. Side note, um, mm -hmm. but um, uh, it has always left. If anybody out there has epilepsy, um, my heart goes out with you. Um, it's always been really, really tough. It's really, really bad. Um, it just makes you, you, you just have to overcome it somehow. And so what made me overcome it was, um, I just have to be really charismatic. And anytime somebody says something about with me falling down or anything like that, I have to just, you know, laugh at myself, you know what I mean? And so, um, with 
Okay, doing, I got I'm a question. Sorry. I got a yeah, comment yeah, yeah, for you yeah. from the audience. Jordan yeah. writes, saying, this man sounds dangerous. Women are smarter than men? A, a lot of girl best friend stop the cap. He's the best friend. Ask him, would he be a housewife to a wife and be a stay-at-home husband? All right, it sounds like your audience... I'm sorry, not to um, categorize your total audience, but it sounds like the, the people that you just referenced to are basically like strong uh, heterosexual males that that basically watch Joe Rogan all day and play Madden. <laughs> I mean, I mean, there, there's there's not much else thinking going on be, I, beyond but, that but the question though, you know? <laughs> would, would, you, would you be a stay-at-home uh housewife to a housewife no no you would not be a stay-at-home housewife no I, I have my mind is too adventurous for for all that okay no would you ever be in a relationship and let the woman uh have sex with other guys what you, you wouldn't let your lady sleep with other guys no that then there is no more relationship then okay <laughs> i thought you, you don't want your woman to be liberated that's not liberation. She can have her own liberation, but just not with me. Okay. You know? <laughs> so, so you're trying to control her. <laughs> you're trying to control her. No, no. If if you're trying to control anybody, that just means you're 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 in 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 unable to control yourself. So this is one thing that my therapist taught me in New York, and this is uh, I really appreciate it for you for her she said the one thing that you can do is control yourself and she said i know that sounds like such a um, obvious fact but she said once you're really able to truly comprehend what i just said that will you will be able to go leaps and beyond leaps and bounds and so yeah so once you're able to really Find out why did you, you why did you need to see a therapist in the first place? Oh, why did I see a therapist? Yes. Um, this was after the um after the accident. Um so you never saw a therapist before the accident? No, no. After the accident, it, it just really traumatized me. I was I was in shape, I was working out, my I didn't have a a speech impediment, you know. Um, everything was going so well. How did the accident happen? I'm just curious. Um after uh, we had a, a, a company buy um, a sector of ours, and so to, to celebrate, um, we rented the track out and we rode around and we raced, then we crashed and I was in a, Oh, you were in the car that crashed? Yeah. So yeah. you're in the passenger seat, you weren't even driving? No, no. Got you, no. okay. So did you feel like responsible for that? Do I feel like I was responsible? Wait, do I feel I was responsible? Yes. No, no. Okay. So, so are you aware that driving at high speeds is not safe? Yeah. Yeah. You are aware that driving at high speeds yeah. is not safe. Yeah. Okay. And did you, were you forced into the car? Or did you choose to get in the car? No, I've paid for everything. I, oh, you paid, you paid money for that experience. Yeah. I paid okay. for the cars. So you paid, paid money. Yeah, yeah. You got into a car that would be driving at a high rate of speed. Was the yeah. person driving the car a, a professional race car yeah. driver or it was yeah. like, was a professional race car driver one of your yeah. colleagues? No, he was uh, not a professional race car driver, but he was licensed to to drive that uh, vehicle. He had a driver's license? Is what you're saying? Oh. So what I'm yeah. asking is, like, was that Dale Earnhardt Jr.? Was that, like, a professional race car driver, or was that one of your colleagues? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't a colleague, no. Okay, so it was a guy worked that worked for at Ferrari. The, yeah. Okay, yeah. it was a Ferrari employee. Yes, yes. Okay, so it was a guy who yeah. put in an application to Ferrari. Yes. Yeah. Okay, got you. Um, but it was not a professional race car driver. I don't understand the the... the so theoretically, anyone can work at Ferrari or work at Nike, but that doesn't make them a professional basketball player. They work at Nike. They work at Foot Locker. It might sell basketball shoes, just like, uh, you know, Ferrari or Porsche might have a, a racing track and they sell fast cars. But 
because you work there doesn't make you a professional race car driver. So what I'm saying essentially is that you paid money to get into a car that would be driving at a high rate of speed. It is a given that a high rate of speed is dangerous, making the car harder to control. If the car goes out of control, driving at a high rate of speed would lead you to unfortunate ends, namely an accident. So you basically opted into a, an experience that was dangerous and you happened to. But you know, the problem was it was the driver that hit me was a colleague. So he tailed. Right. <laughs> okay. So, yes. so, okay. So the other car that hit you, that was also driving at a high rate of speed, right? Was driven not by a professional. It was driven by him. It was driven by a colleague of yours. Yes. Yes. Who is just a regular Joe like yes, you, right? Just a regular Joe. Okay. So yes. there's two things of interest. Number one, why were you not driving your car, but he was driving his car? Um, they wouldn't let me. Why wouldn't they let you drive your own um, car, but they let him drive his? Because during the, uh, the exam, I told him I have epilepsy. That's a great reason not to let you drive that damn car. That's a phenomenal <laughs> reason. It's phenomenal. Shout out to Hustino. With the bowler alert, he writes, I'll pay for the visitor's black box if he will read it. <laughs> Hustino, I, I don't think I have confidence that, that, it can, that it can reach him. I don't think so. Oh, man. Um, but, but if he wants one, I'll, I'll even uh, I'll find out a way to send him one. Okay, so I understand that. That makes perfect sense. You have ep epilepsy. You can't drive a car. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Got you. Um, do you think that epilepsy affects your ability to make decisions? No, no. Okay. No. Do you think that it was a bad decision to get in that uh, car on that racetrack? No, I was planning for this at least a month out. I was ready to go. Got you. Yeah, because by my estimation, I think that you have feminine thinking. Often when women make a mistake, they, they don't take the accountability to say, I made a, mad, a bad decision. Like, for example, my case, you know, I take calculated risk, like boxing, for example. Yeah. That's a calculated risk. I was going to go pro. I got a pro contract. And then I got a call from someone who's intelligent, actually a Jewish woman I know, uh, mother of a good friend of mine. She said, Marquette, you're an intelligent man. You're making good money. Does it make sense for you to get punched in the head for a living? You don't need to do that. Why would you do it? And I said, you know what? You're right. It's too much risk for a man in my position who has great things to accomplish. I can't put my life at risk. That wouldn't be reasonable. I value my life and my intelligence too much. Now, for you, who has no intention of becoming a race car driver, you're merely a passenger, you opt into this, you're driving at high rates of speed, you have your colleague who's just some random doofus also driving at a high rate of speed and he runs into you, nearly killing you and temporarily paralyzing you, infecting your, uh, uh, adversely affecting your cognitive ability, and to this day, you still think that was a good idea to do that? Well, first of all, um, life is always a risk. So you can walk out of here today and get hit by a car how do you not know i have a gun on me and i could shoot you right now well you, mine you, is mine anybody is closer. can die mine is any closer point in second and i've already calculated for that yeah but you anybody calculating risk is is mine is closer make, and i've already calculated no, for that does not make you see no the difference sense. between you and i I've already calculated for that. If you yeah. reach for yours, mine is actually within six inches of my hand and you wouldn't make it. Yes. So I've already calculated for that risk. What you're comparing, you said you can walk outside of this building and get hit by a car. Yeah, well, that's actually improbable. But if you're on a race car track driving at high rates of speed with amateur drivers, then the probability yeah. is multiplied oh, yeah. significantly. So that's oh, yeah. a bad decision is what I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. But it was exhilarating. It was... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was a um Shabbat. i mean it's the same thing as i would choose to be a buddhist and that's so therefore you are in no way shape or form to be and in no way a harm i mean unless another buddhist gets mad at you and decides to end your life i mean <laughs> that's the only thing unless you eat some eat something terrible you know <laughs> yeah okay okay um got you so you're sticking by that decision, even though you had to go to physical and mental therapy after it. And it seemed yes, like you had um, trouble recovery. Will I do it again? If if uh, yes, y yes, I would. It was an amazing learning. I learned so much about myself. Uh -huh. I was terrible at the hospital. I I was so disrespectful at the nurses and the doctors. <laughs> I was so um, uh, why though just angry at them, and then. Um, uh, later on, I was just mad at myself 
that I just lost so much just time and so much money and uh, and my health was gone. And then um, I had to see a therapist. Then I went back to the hospital. I gave my, my thanks to everyone there who helped me. And that's how I met, met my girlfriend there. And oh, you got uh, a girlfriend currently? Yeah. No. Okay, that's what's up. Um, I'm going to go out and say she is white or Asian. Yeah, she's I'm, Asian. I'm yeah. going with she's white or Asian. And you said she is? She's what? Asian, yeah. Asian. Yeah. Do you find that amazing that I was able to calculate that she's white or Asian, being that you are neither white or Asian? How, how do you think I put that together? Because she works at a hospital. Because she's a nurse. It's only... Nah, that's not how I put that together. Shout out to Davion. He writes, this man just gave you a golden reaction video to make. <laughs> Shout out. Um, nah, um, I I don't think that actually makes sense. What's uh, a golden reaction? What does that mean? I, I don't know. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure. Not entirely sure. Okay, so uh, your old lady is Asian. And, yeah. And you think that I assess that because she works at a hospital. That's your Well, theory? I mean, that's... If that was your first response you, to say, let me guess, she's either white <laughs> or Asian. <laughs> nah, nah, that was not the, that was not the logic. Okay, very good. Uh, anyways, um, when people see you, what ethnicity do they typically think you are? I'm um, black, yeah. Just straight up black. Yeah, yeah. Like or I'm, Ethiopian. Yeah, I guess out here people would say that, wouldn't they? Yeah. Uh, shout out to Rakeley Swimming. He writes, LOL, I clocked Asian ASAP also, Saint. My guy, it's because you are, excuse me, it's because they are passive. Still a woman, though. Watch your six. <laughs> oh, indeed, bro. Indeed, in a real Still way. Still a woman. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Um, so you think your woman likes uh, a nice guy, or do you think she would like a more masculine guy or a less masculine guy? I think she likes me. I think that's all. We've been together for four years now. Four years? Yeah. How about that? Yeah. What, what age is she? Yeah. She's 30 now. Damn. Yeah. Damn, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. So my step on your toes? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Um. <laughs> oh shit. Um how how old are you? I'm 37. 37. Okay, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. God damn it. God damn it. Yeah, for a second I was like, oh damn, Brody then went off the edge. <laughs> okay, so you guys are four years in. Any children? No, no, not yet. You don't want to have any or no, uh, she's giving her she's giving the uh the old signals, but um Wait what? <laughs> Wait what, bro? She's giving the old, the old signals, you know, uh, like, hey, you know, uh, this would be good for, our, you know, this would be good, this would be nice for our kids, you know. Uh huh. This would, this would be nice. Um, buying this car, this would be nice for our kids. But um, I want to uh, have her have at least two years when she does not have to work at all, and I want to have a full year for ourselves to which we could just travel the world and do everything. Shout out to Brandon. He writes, tell him we don't play games. Uh, he, he, <laughs> you don't want to have to figure out the hard way. Um, shout out to Yuri. He writes, buddy has the face of Myron, the voice of Jordan Peterson and the personality of a potato. God damn it. Uh, shout out to uh, MJ Nelson supporting the work as well. Much respect. Okay. So you said that you want to take two years for you and the lady to, to just travel the world. No, no. One year to uh, travel the world okay. uh, together. Or, yeah, and then two years for her just to raise um, our kid alone, just just to not not have to worry about work, nothing like that. Okay. You know? All right. So that's a minimum of three years before you start trying to conceive, right? No, that's it's just one year basically, one year of us being off of uh, everything. Ah, oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um. So is the idea that she's going to start, you're going to try to conceive when she's 31? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or probably any day now. Or, in, or any day now. I mean, really. <laughs> got you. Got you. That's a beautiful you, thing. You can't plan life. I mean. Are no. you married? No. no. You plan on getting married? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I want to now. Yeah. You want to? Yeah. You're going to get legally married? Yeah. 
yeah i went to a friend of mine's wedding it was it was really nice i said oh that's what it's all about <laughs> you, you okay. enjoyed you enjoyed the wedding huh? yeah i was like okay all right <laughs> that's, that's great really nice scenery here it's okay who all makes right. more money you or her i do you do okay yeah and you don't have any worry about uh legal marriage or her the possibility that she might dip on you um well i'm having a prenup yeah uh that's that that's about it you know tyrese had a prenup did you hear about that had a prenup I, she I said she didn't want anything many millionaires that had prenups and they lose but you know that's best i can do and and i, I want to share my life with this woman w with the best you can do just not getting legally married would that be the best you could do that's that's again playing the the safe route and then you if you want to play the safe route you might as well be a buddhist you know and just not have no fun at all you know but so you're I'm, saying involving the government in your personal relationship is an exciting thing you you can't do everything you know including your wedding without getting legally married yes i i do want to get legally married to her is because i love her and um, what does a legal marriage have to do with love <laughs> <laughs> how is that related bro i'm well, trying to understand it's, it is for tax reasons when you purchase a house you know when our when our has everything everything so our government so, incentivizes marriage um yes they really do huh, they that's they really do that's curious <laughs> you're, you're saying there's a financial incentive to marriage oh oh yeah Okay, that's weird because people who are wealthy, wealthy men are trying not to get married because there's a financial disincentive to divorce. The disadvantage, disadvantage if you get divorced. Yes. Okay. Now, what percentage of marriages end in divorce? How many? What percentage? Oh, I know. It's crazy. Right. So the likelihood is that you will be divorced. So if the likelihood? Using, if you, yeah, the likelihood. Uh, well um i would like to say since gabby got into uh stanford you know i'm one of those two you know gabby's your sister yeah yeah so i like to say you know i'm one of those, one where'd, of those where'd you get into uh berkeley no shit that's yeah. a damn shame that's a damn shame yeah they still tripping over there god damn it ain't that a pity <laughs> uh shout to rakeley swimming he writes like i said watch your six women know right away if they bro i feel you uh women know right away if they want your mini me's homie you so don't let me read this comment oh. real quick uh you don't think she knows how to poke holes in the condom or lie about birth control <laughs> how long did she make you wait to smash so i met her when i was at the hospital she, she was your caretaker yes okay. i was so nasty to her she knew nothing about me she thought i was just she didn't know my insurance. She knew nothing. I was so <laughs> she didn't know my insurance. I was so nasty to her. So disgusting. Oh, like, um, every day she would come in, she would just hi, how are you? Just so graceful, so happy. And I would say, like, what the F are you doing here? No, I don't want this. No, I do huh? Why? Yeah, why? Why were you behaving? I like was that? because I was just so mad that I'm in a hospital that I I I, I could I have a, a tracheotomy in me and that um oh I have, Did a, you have a colostomy bag? No, they they um have sutures in my head, so they had to do a um but you didn't have a colostomy bag though. had to do a craniotomy in my head. But no colostomy bag though. A colostomy bag? Yeah. I don't I, I think so. oh yes, yes, yes. Oh you did have a colostomy yeah, bag. Yeah. Oh, and damn, so you're really thugging, my boy. Yeah. And so um I just was being so rude and nasty, and but she was still remain so positive. She would say, um, I remember, I can't remember much, but I remember this specific moment. Um, she brought, um, the CNA is supposed to bring the food, but she brought in the food and um, it was something I don't like. It had like, oh, cheese, it had something that had cheese on it. And so I smacked the tray up and it hit her in her, it hit her, in her nose. And then, um, uh, the officer or like whatever he is, like security, whatever he came, he came rushing in, grabbed her. And then um, he said something and said, all right, let's strap him down. And then she said to, 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 um, to the officers or whatever they were, calm down. He's okay. Calm down. He's all right. And it was just like, so like, 
I never had that for me from so ever. You were behaving like a psychopath. Oh, I was I was just um to put it, I was just a um uh an arrogant asshole. Um, with a colostomy bag though. With yes, yes. Um and um when I left, um I didn't even <laughs> say thank you or nothing. It was just just really bad. And when I went back there, just to apologize and say thank you for everybody. I had to tell you the quick love story. I had a uh, a bunch of roses. I asked uh, for her name. Uh, hey, my boy, you definitely a simp, my boy. Yeah. So I had a bunch of roses out. <laughs> oh and shit! I waited for her to come out. I had a bunch of roses, and I asked for. Her. I said, "Hey, this is for me." And then she was like, "What the hell are you doing here?" And I said, "Hey." Um, I, just for you, just to saying how apologize, how, how sorry I am for everything, and if you like, I'd love to take you out one time. And then she did said, she still think you were black at this point? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then she said, "Thank you so much for your apology, but I don't take I don't date patients." And then so I said, "Oh, okay." And then I came back the next day. With another, with another flower, with another rose. A bro, you definitely a simp. You want to know what a simp is? You, sir, are a simp. That's no, what this it is, is not bro. being a simp. Nah, this is knowing nah, what you want. Nah, nigga, that's no, being a simp, boy. No, no. <laughs> it's not being a simp. This is knowing. Oh, that's what, being a simp, no, boy. <laughs> no. This is knowing what you damn want. This no, is what you want. Oh, boy, <laughs> that's <laughs> being a simp, boy. So I went back the next day, same time, with the rose. And then she said, Okay, all right. Let's let's go. Have listen, drinks. Bart Simpson. Listen, Bart Simpson. Then, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call you Bart Simpson from now on, bro. <laughs> and then we did. You thought your lunch. ass was in a romantic comedy, huh? Yeah. Then then we had we had lunch. You thought you was Ryan the, Gosling in this the whole time? Yeah. Yeah. Then we had lunch. Yeah. That was it. Oh shit. And then the whole time I'm oh. like the whole day I'm stuttering. I could barely talk. I have half my head is like growing in, half my other head is not growing in because uh, you can still see the staples in my head. It's, it just looks really bad. And then... Uh, why were you angry when you were in the hospital? Why was I angry? Yeah. Because I lost everything. Everything that I've worked for is gone. Everything. But you still think it was a good idea to get in that race, huh? Yeah, because when you see somebody, when you witness somebody at your lowest being the most kindest and loving person better than your family or anybody you you remember that so 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 much like you, that you know what i'm tripping on though is and this is why i'm suspicious of your girl if i'm keeping it a bean with you mm -hmm. you see i measure up a man when he's in suffering i measure up the man when he used to be wealthy but he's no longer wealthy and to see how you reacted to that, you fell apart like a hoe. You see what I'm saying? Whereas like a, a real man in your challenge, that's where we see who you are. So the fact that she would see you crumble and behave in a childlike way and still accept you, to me, that's a very low standard. And that's why I think that you're inclined to accept low behavior from the female or you don't need her to be under your leadership is because you weren't even able to lead yourself. And frankly, you know, we can all say a lot of things, but I know for a fact, if I was in that situation, one, I would acknowledge if my decision was a foolish decision. And if I had to deal with the consequences, I would suffer the, cons the consequences with grace, especially being that it's something that I chose. It wasn't circumstance. You see, some of us are victim of circumstance. You were a victim of your own decision making. Yeah, I, I, I did um, suffer the circumstance for exactly twenty four hours, um, and then I came back. I realized, I day I went home, I said, "Oh man, I, I that's really messed up that she I, she didn't take my well, she took my apology that that she didn't go out with, on a date date with me." And I spoke with my dad, and my dad said, try harder. He said, if you want something, just like with your company, when they said no, what'd you do? I said, well, I tried harder. Exactly. You have to try harder. What and did I you said, study at Berkeley? Um, economics. So you completed a bachelor's degree in economics? Um, almost, yeah. Okay. So did you get a degree from Berkeley or not? No, no. Okay. Well, I appreciate you uh, being transparent about yeah. that. 
And, you know, I do want to concede, actually, that economics is a very rigorous degree. In fact, the most difficult course I took at Berkeley was an econ course. So Are you in Berkeley as well? Yeah, I did. Um, I also got the degree, though, my boy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. I just I just show up in that motherfucker for fun. You're, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, very good. Um, hmm. Uh, shout out to Andre. He writes, that's a whole Netflix love story. My <laughs> that's crazy as hell. Hopefully. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, you see, that's one of those stories that people, you know, like we see it in the movies. It's dramatic and it goes right along with the female dysfunction, right? There, There's two possible tales. There's your tale, which is on the low side, the base the base uh, and i don't mean base in the internet slang since i mean base in the true sense let me get the definition for everyone i'm just going to go to dictionary.com because people on the internet make up words and change the definition to words <sighs> damn there's like so many damn definitions of base i'm not even gonna go through it it's is, it's just like wow this is terrible um but anyways the point is you went in there, like put it this way. If it was my daughter and she said, Hey dad, I, I met this guy at my job. I said, Oh, one of your colleagues. Well, if he has the same job as you don't marry him, like try to upgrade love. Yeah. And she says, no, he was a patient. I'm like, oh, okay, well, what was he, what was he in for? Like, was he like a boxer and he was trying to win a championship belt? You know, was he a hockey player? And maybe he got hit in the face with a puck. Was he a, you know, an extreme sport enthusiast and he was going for the gold in some endeavor. No, he was a passenger in a car that was driving really fast and got into an accident. Okay, he's a passenger. What? The driver's a passenger. Okay, that's kind of whack as fuck. Okay, all right. So, well, tell me about him. Well, he's had a really bad attitude. So he's sitting there uh, with a, a colostomy bag and is just being rude and foul the whole time as though it was someone else's fault that he's in here. So, yeah, he's been really unpleasant, Dad. And he even did something and, like, hit me physically. And we were about to, like, uh, you know, inject him with something. Uh, so, yeah, he's been quite unpleasant, Dad. I'd be like, did this is the guy you want? Like the guy who makes a bad decision and does not know how to conduct himself when there's challenge, stress, and problems? You want the fucking well, weak guy? Well, well, I am guarantee she told him, well, this is a guy who sold his company for six figures. That's why he rented the cars. And so he knows how to deal with stress and all the rigorous components that go with running, starting a business. And so I like I like what you're saying. Here's my challenge to you. And this is the same challenge I give to women because I deal with a lot of women and I hear them say things that are on repeat. They'll say like, oh, I'm not usually like this. I say, oh, are you not you right now? They're like, no, no, I'm not usually like this. I said, oh, so who are you right now? Like reintroduce yourself under a different name since you're someone else right now. You see, you have to be you every day. So the behaviors that you display, that's a representation of you. So if you are what you're saying you are in terms of someone who's able to handle challenge and stress, et cetera, then the question is, why is it that you were not doing that um, when you were in that hospital bed? Why was I not? What? Yeah, yeah. So if you're so good at handling stress and challenges, why weren't you doing it, ha handling stress and challenge very well in that hospital bed? Well, I don't know if you ever had a serious accident like that, but that series of events and enduring that, I wish upon nobody. Yeah, um, you, you crumbled, in other words. You crumbled under the pressure that you created. That's why in the Quran, it says most, uh, or let me not reference the Quran. Uh, it has been said, it has been stated that most of your problems are of your own making. No, no, no. Most not, of your problems not, are of your not, own making. Not the problem that, that, that led me to the hospital. I'm talking about being in the hospital, especially when you hear the doctor, not you hear, but when your mother tells you, the doctor says that, well, you're lamest terms you're going to be a vegetable you're no longer able going to be walk and you're not able going nah, to be you couldn't be a you couldn't hear the doctor say you're a vegetable because if that's the case you wouldn't be able to hear and no no, no. this is what your mother tells you um after you after you come out of um 
of a uh, what is it called of, of a coma yeah no after um after the coma but then after you're after the induce inducement induce something okay. yeah um she said that you could have been a, um an uh, a vegetable and then they'll put you in a facility where you're there where you're just waiting for your heart to stop yeah but you're just you're you're explaining why you were misbehaving instead of saying oh. i misbehaved because i was weak that's just all there is to it it's like there's your explanation see that's the problem we tend to give stories when there's no story there's no story it's i had weak character and i displayed weak character oh yeah absolutely i was when when you miss when you lose everything that you ever ever have and ever had you did not lose it let me tell you let me tell you something that's this is very important for me and i'll tell you why because i didn't get the privileges that you obviously got uh and so it bothers me when people who are privileged like yourself they fuck up the privileges um and then they make excuses so for example i'll tell you the difference between you and i you you said when you lose you didn't lose you threw it away you put yourself at undue risk and you suffered under a bad decision then you lost things because of your decision you didn't lose it. You threw it away, I should say. Now, let me tell you what loss is when circumstance happens to you. I, like you, went to Berkeley, except I persisted and worked hard and graduated. Difference. Then after that, I eventually founded a company, worked hard on it for many years. I was about to become extraordinarily wealthy. So wealthy, you wouldn't even be able to talk to me directly. You need to talk to a fucking intermediary who talks to another guy that sends a messenger pigeon. I was going to be that wealthy. You understand? I was in China doing a deal with the Chinese government. Inked the deal for a tremendous amount of money. Then I flew back to America and something called COVID-19 occurred. Oh. And then I had to shut shut down my company because my company was specifically about bringing people together in large groups. Now, what happened to uh, me? I lost everything because of circumstance, not because of my bad decisions. That's loss. That's circumstance. What you did was bad decisions. That damn so COVID. I lost due to circumstance, but I tell you what the difference is. I never complained or felt sorry for myself, even though I had every right, because my whole life I did everything correctly. I went to good schools. I worked hard as shit. I got out of poverty. I did that without uh, the help of parents or a good family. That's the difference. And that's why when I'm under challenge, I don't crack and fall apart. Whereas you, when you're under challenge, you crack and fall apart. Well, it kind of sounds like you're still holding on to that. No, I'm to, giving you no, to, that's that's a good point. I'm giving you an analogy. For example, you tried to make it seem like you lost things. No, you threw them away. I gave you an example of when someone actually did lose something, not throw it away. Lose, that's when circumstance affects you. Shout out to Top Row. He writes, What's crazy is he's using old school game, but he said the way uh the old ways are bad in the very beginning. That's that's correct. I mean, he's using movie game. I don't know if anybody ever did this shit in real life. Yeah. Um he speaks like a female. His woman will leave him and throw uh, and throw how he treated her in the hospital as the reason. Damn. What do you, what do you think of that? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> My boy said no. Uh, shout to Neotech. He writes, Peace of the Saints. A nurse is supposed to take care of you. Very effeminate. Why are you dating when you need to recover? Um, that was four years ago. Um, fair enough shout yeah. to brian he writes uh sent an email okay let's see what he sent via email he writes peace of the saints i will never be able to repay you for the wisdom you have provided me my girlfriend of four years is pressuring me to get married by the end of this year and she is not a citizen so it will have to be legal my finances also aren't the strongest right now and i don't think i'm in a position to marry say no more that's settled uh we currently live together but we'll uh, but the lease will be up in June and I'm seriously considering ending the relationship. Any advice or perspective, big bro? Yeah, absolutely. You should never be pressured into anything, especially not a lifelong contract. A lifelong contract is something that you should you know, do when you're confident and comfortable. So I highly recommend against that. And furthermore, you'll never have the confidence of saying, you know what, we did this for the right reasons or she wanted to marry me because of me as opposed to, hey, I've been dealing with this guy for a long time and I need a, a green card or access to the country. Are you advising your audience to not get married? I'm advising my audience to make the best decisions for themselves. 
And so that is not get married. Incorrect. It depends on the government that you are under and the laws therein. So let's say I'm in. So let's take me, for example. Yeah. Um, I'm about to marry. So you say I, I shouldn't. You would not be one who follows my way. You, oh. you, are, you are not a saint. So I would tell you to do whatever you feel like oh. doing. I think that there are some persons and you've heard for, you may have been made aware that Freud speaks to the death wish or the the urge to self-sabotage or self-destroy. That streak is strong with you. And so in as much as that's the case, I don't think that you would heed anything that I would tell you. Uh, but the fact of the matter is if a man is in a financially strong position and if he's wise and shrewd and rational, he would think through, well, what are the likelihoods and what are the probabilities? And knowing that human beings are very fallible, women in particular, you'd be wise because there's very little upside to legal marriage and there's tremendous life shattering downside. But you said, um, you are a, uh, I am not a, say it again? Saint. Why, why am I not a, why, why do I not get to hold the, not, not to get to hold the, 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 the crown of, uh, of, uh, of saint upon me? When you came in here, did you know yourself to be a saint? Um, I know myself to be me. I don't want to say my name, but me. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Okay, so if you came in here and you didn't know yourself to be a saint, then why would you want to call yourself a saint now? Oh, uh, I guess it's just the, the definition of saint, you know. Well, it's never crossed your mind, the word, right? Oh, or yeah, to yeah. define I yourself so. as such, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but enough. also, j just to go back on what you said earlier, you said that I crumbled during uh, uh, the fact that... Yeah, you crack uh, under pressure. <laughs> yeah, I cracked yeah. under pressure. Um, <clears throat> so yes, I did. Uh, I never saw it like that, but I, I did absolutely crack under pressure. Um, I really appreciate you for bringing that up. I did crack under pressure at that moment. And, but me going back to her and then coming out, being able to articulate myself now, because if you could have heard me then, it's terrible being able to walk again talk again and to acquire another company which does even more numbers than what it did prior that is an absolute amazing comeback no i'm, I'm happy to hear that and i'm glad that you found a, a lady that and you, so you feel happy for with. you for you to for you to be stalled by this coronavirus that stalled a potential billion dollar uh uh i i don't like put a number to it but a potential massive leap of income to for this uh virus to uh stall it just shows you have cracked because it will not allow you <laughs> Because it no, will not no, allow don't, you. Don't try that. No, no, don't try because that. Because it will not allow no, you. No, hold to, on one second, player. To, to hold on one second, player. To no. get it again. No. That's what. Hold that's what we do. Hold on one second. You see, people like <laughs> us, second. entrepreneurs. One second. Even though we fall. No. To, to, here's to no, 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 graces, no, no, no. Hold on. I gotta stop you there. I gotta up. stop you there because you're not making sense. I didn't fall. I did everything right. Circumstances befell me. That's the difference. I did not fall. So like don't don't ever confuse that. Now if I, I, if I, I ever understand that. if I ever yes. fall, I'll be the first person to say I fell, I stumbled I understand there. That part. But yes. I did not I did not fall. I did everything correctly. I understand that. Yeah. I did it by the book. Yes. So there's a major difference. Yes. You see like for example, you said you went to Berkeley. I said I went to Berkeley. You didn't get the degree. I did get the degree. Yes. There's a big difference there. It is admirable to get into Berkeley. It's respectable to take it, pursue an economics degree. I respect that a whole lot, much harder than getting a music degree, for example. That's not what I did. But, you know, people fail out on music degrees. So I respect that. But you always have to draw that clear delineation of truth in that, nah, bro, like, I did everything correctly. The filthy governments of the world that were basically working on biological uh, weapons and the motherfucker got out of the lab, that ended what I was working on. But here's the thing. I was well off before that, and I'm well off after that. 
That's the difference. And I never complain to anybody. And then thirdly, I'm still building businesses. Now, let me acknowledge Jabrizi. He writes, I had Crohn's since a child and suffered for years. My mother told me I might never live a normal life. That's that's rough, wow. especially coming from your mom. I remained a positive person. He is, in fact, a very positive person. And even my mom says that. Never lashed out or made an excuse. That's correct. He even boxes with us when he's sick. Oh, wow. He writes, my mother had cancer. This is a fact. Wow. And was never going crazy like that. His mother actually passed away from cancer. And you know the crazy thing. Even my mother asked about him. Like, hey, how's your friend Jabrizi doing? So he never complained. Never saw him down. Wow. See, there's differences in character. And, and it's just important to acknowledge that. And when you have stronger levels of character, you can get the best out of life. You can get the best out of life. Um, shout out to Sharp Minds. He writes, how did you guess his lady was Asian? <laughs> <laughs> there were a number of factors that went into it, but the hospital... No, not the hospital at Nurse all. Nurse or doctor? No, that's not all, at all I had to say. In fact, <laughs> I, I used to manage a program at Johns Hopkins Medical, right? Which is the foremost medical yeah. institution in the world, yeah. right? Yeah. And it's actually the best. Yeah. I said foremost. That's yeah. what that means. Yeah. <laughs> there was not a significant number of Asians there. It's because it's it's um it's brought in the best people in the world to work there. But I said there's not a significant number of Asians. There. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, no, it's not because you're in the medical field, which I, I think the medical field is reasonably diverse. A lot of Pakistanis, a lot of Indians, right? Um, I said Asian because I've lived in Asia. I've been around Asians a lot. And your manner um, would be something that uh, an Asian woman would be more open to from a cultural standpoint. Oh, uh, wow. Uh. And especially if people are perceiving you as black and you, you don't identify as black, correct? No. Right. What do you identify as? Cuban. There you go. Yeah. So you're being perceived as black. I'm not getting into it. Long story short is because of his manner. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, I, I also find that a uh, uh, comical. And uh, so people look at you and they think you're black. Yeah. But, but you identify as Cuban. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how, can you explain that to me? <laughs> yeah, I I just sometimes just say yeah, it's I only only define it to to a uh, I say to like to a non-white person like if a if the Latino asked me or an Asian say so like oh you're black right you know then then I would you know be more stern and tell them, no, I'm actually Cuban. But if a white person says, it's like, oh, you're, you're, you're black, right? I would just agree and say, yeah, yeah. Because me going out the way to even explaining to, to them, like, no, I'm black. It's like, oh my God, really? Oh, wow. Like, I, I don't, I don't mean to be racist at all to, to <laughs> nobody at, at all. I'm, but uh -huh. I'm just, that's just what I, that's just my own experience. Uh -huh. with this yeah that that's fascinating um why would you not explain it to the to the white person why do they do not deserve to get the truth apparently yeah, because, <laughs> because it, it leads to a bunch of bunch of examples and a bunch of bunch of um uh of um me telling them a bunch of history that i really don't want to uh get into and um yeah so I just always tell them, hey, I'm black. And so it's more acceptable to them. Like, uh, but you're, okay, you're black. You're in my mind, you're black. That's it. That's crazy. Got it. Settled. That is crazy. Okay. Now, now we can move on with this conversation. Okay, now <laughs> what about, uh, explain this to me. Like, why wouldn't you just say I'm Afro-Latino? That too will confuse them as well, believe it or not. You know, because then you're trying to like, wait, what, what do you, what the hell is that? I mean, what, what do you, I mean, wait, you're, you're either Latino or you're black. I mean, you ask me, I mean, my name is John and I'm white, you know, that, that's it. So what, what are you? So um, I, there are pricks out there like that. And these, 
these pricks do come in um uh in uh say in the higher statures mostly of, of income so um so i just mostly say i'm uh i'm black just to really you know not off that that whole conversation but you don't feel black though i actually don't know what feeling black is so do you feel I'm, cuban do i i feel human yeah cuban 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 yes i would say no to either because my grandmother um she didn't want us to be um abused or persecuted or nothing so she had us go to the greatest schools and um i mean i went to the only i was the only colored kid in in all my schools I ever, do you ever feel more white than black um if to to place it in that um in that uh salty tone yes yes I, I i would okay so you do feel more white than black yeah yeah okay okay fair yeah. enough um okay you know it's fascinating when i put it in that uh, dichotomy of do you feel more white than black mm -hmm. it's interesting because when i asked do you feel black you said well how do you feel black no i don't feel black but when i said do you feel more white than black then it seems like you knew what the feeling of being white is yeah because um uh i say the, f the feeling of white is through my upbringing just my personal upbringing is just the tone level and the latino level is is basically the waiver and then the black tone it really that depends on wherever you come from okay so are you aware I that i set up did i mess that up uh i don't i didn't make it didn't make a ton of sense but yeah, are, you're aware that white and black are racial categorizations whereas say latino is uh more of an ethnicity as opposed to a race yes yeah so racially i know you feel white but racially what do you think your racial category is and there's really only three major racial categories in the pure sense which is negroid caucasoid mongoloid so which racial category do you belong to I really don't want to get into it, bro. I mean, this this is this is like a a, a class that's going nowhere. And uh, I, as I told you, um, my IQ level is a C minus. So on a very good day, so it means like after an espresso coffee and a delicious sunny side up eggs, bacon. You know what I think actually is occurring? I think that um, you, like many others, you struggle with uh, being black or being categorized as black because historically it's been uh, looked down upon so so badly. And so there's so much negativity associated with it in the context of a, a white society, of course, that you, you run from it. And so you're experiencing like a psychological block there. No, because I associate myself black many times when... I'm a part of hedge fund managers and VCs and angels. Um, I'm, I'm, they, they think I'm black. What makes you think that they think uh, that you're black? Why, why do you think they perceive? Because you as such? whenever, whenever the conversation comes up, uh, I'm black. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so, so if that's the case, if black is a racial reality and there's a phenotype, there's a set of features that go with being black, then why do you still think you're not black if everyone else is like, bro, you black? Well, I, because of my parents, I, you're I aware that I'm there's not. black Cubans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, my parents don't, so, so yeah. Wait, you got to repeat that. Because my parents are Cuban, so. Right. How That's do you why. like? Are they not black Cubans? Yeah, they're they're light, a little bit lot lighter than me. Yeah. So you had two light parents, but you came out black. Yeah, yeah. My grandmother's dark, and um, yeah, I haven't met my dad's grandmother. Is your grandmother a black Cuban? No, no. She's so she's dark, but she's not black. I don't understand what you're saying, but yeah, bruh is in English. Yeah, I. 
She's... ¿Hablas español? Tu, tu abuela es negra, ¿no? No. She's... Ay, ay, ay. Cuban. She's... Ay, ay, ay. She's, uh, fair. Cubana negra. <laughs> Cubana negra, ¿no? She's fair. <laughs> I know black. I know black. I, I cubano. <laughs> Word? That's deep. Um, yeah. Uh, shout out to Rakely. He writes, yo, that's crazy. I thought I was the only man who knew the transatlantic slave trade skipped the Caribbean too. I heard that Cubans passed the brown paper bag test during Jim Crow as well. <laughs> uh, shout out to Jay. He writes, he's Afro-Cuban and doesn't want to say it. Latinos hate to admit that. Tuition. Afro oh, well, um, well, I know my name and uh, that's that's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you say Latinos don't want to admit it, we have to acknowledge that there are Latinos that are legitimately white. You know, they're just as white as any person uh, in America or in Europe. In some cases, there's yeah. Latinos that are legitimately European by blood. Um, now, there's a great many of them that pretend to be when really they're not. I'm not going to name any names. You know, I go point nobody out, but there's a one or two of them that clearly uh, they're they're a bit brown. But because I'm looking at you on camera and I'm looking at me on camera and I'm like, you're pretty close to my complexion. Yeah. yeah. Like, like you might actually be the same complexion. Yeah. Maybe I'm not black. Well, I think either. this is pretty much a rabbit hole. I mean, really, just maybe to, I'm not black either. Just, just uh, to go to. <sighs> to Do you diversify notice? and and select out people's different ethnicities is it really doesn't go nowhere it it does not go nowhere for the advancement for humankind for nobody for no shout out to troy he writes get a man that's not attractive for the stability <laughs> shout out to brian who just became a member at the sassin.com that's t-h-e-s-a-s-n.com um one thing I must concede, though, and I think it's very clear, is that it appears as though, you know, throughout the entire conversation, which could, you know, has, you know, I'd say like has some, uh, has had some variation. And there are a number of places you could have, you know, been offended or uncomfortable. And I feel like you've done very well in the conversation. Not until the race thing comes up have you seemed to be evasive. And uh, it seems though there's maybe been some racial traumas in, in your experience. No, no, I just don't. No, it's it's just that I, me, everything everything I say today is coming from myself, from my experiences. That's it. I don't speak upon nobody else. Um, uh, I just feel like we get too um, sucked in our own sectors of people and divide ourselves too much. And we think we are so, so, so different from one another. But actually, we're all just effing people. We all, all are alike. Shout out to Jabrizi. He writes, the colonizers do such a great job brainwashing people. Example. Uh, uh, the, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are so much alike. I don't know. I got to call BS on that. I'll tell you why I got to call BS. Not on what you're saying. I think it is true that we are all so much alike. That's a fact. And that's why this ism is for all of mankind. I live it out and I believe it, but I don't think you actually believe it. I think you're just saying that because it sounds good. You see, if you believe that we were all so alike, you wouldn't A, be in denial of being black and B, when I said, do you feel black? You said, no. I said, do you feel white? You're like, yes. So you, I don't know that you'd really it's be able to discern I, those I feel feelings. Like I'm just a human being, bro. I mean, yeah, that's, but that's, that's not what you said when you said you feel more white than black. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with oh, that. Okay. I'm just saying there's nothing wrong with that. You, if you feel white, you feel like a tree, you feel like an apple. It doesn't matter to me. It's just, are you aware yeah. of what's going on in your own yeah, psychology? Yeah, I mean, I, this this, uh, this segregation thing, I am, I, I've, I really don't like it. I, I just think that you know, like, I'm even, I, I, yeah, I just, just don't. I don't want to say nothing, but I just don't, don't, don't like it. You know, it's um, 
I, I just think that we all have to just really realize that we're all just the same. We have the same type of problems, the same uh, mental disabilities. The Shout same. to Victor. He writes, interesting new segment, Saint Ask the Simp. Love it. This is how you change life. Hey, hey, <laughs> ask, ask him. <laughs> For real. Ask the oh, simp. Oh, man. He will tell you the truth. That is great. That'd be a Whatever funny. Whatever that means. That'd be a simp. funny segment. Ask a simp. <laughs> <laughs> if you see a simp on the street, ask him. Oh, my goodness. He will tell you the truth. That's lovely. Don't let him walk by. You know what? I, I appreciate you uh, dropping in on us today. Um, I, you know, and one thing I will say that I, I think is funny is like, I'm surprised people haven't hit you with Indian. Now, I think there's a there's uh -huh. not a, there's not a ton of Indians in uh -huh. Las Vegas. But if there were, I think surely. Yeah, in New York, I was asked to. Yeah. Right yeah. in New, in New yeah. York, yeah, yeah, New York's a lot more diverse. They they hit yeah. you with the Indian thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, one thing I will tell you is that due to racism in certain you know countries, to be categorized as Indian is very disadvantageous. You know, what just, in what in certain countries, like for oh. example, in United Arab Emirates, uh, in uh, Singapore, and the list goes on. Unfortunately, well, and, that depends how your money goes. Well, that's the problem is that because of your racial category, when people look at you, they're categorizing you lower. Now, if yeah, you, but as if an individual you have, are well, you have off, the money, but you're that's, good everywhere. That, that's something they find out on the back end. Though. You understand? The oh, difference, yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It's on the back. And that's yeah. the problem. Um, uh, may I acknowledge uh, Jabrizi? He writes. Uh, he got just as much game as a broken Xbox. Damn. Damn. Would you consider yourself to have game? No, I, when I when I say someone has game, I think of them as sleazy. Okay. As a, no, so no, I don't have game. Just just honest. Sleaze ball. Yeah. So I I don't have game. Just tell you how it is. If you don't like it, okay. All right. It's very nice knowing you though. Very good. Okay, now, what is this whole uh, bring flowers stuff? Like, why, why would you bring somebody flowers? Why would I bring her flowers? Anybody. Like, why would you ever bring anyone oh, flowers? I ever? just thought, you know, she, uh, a woman likes flowers. That's all I could, all I th can, could think of was to bring a nurse flowers. You know, only thing I, is, that's, that's how, that's the small, it's a small uh, men's mind. You know, that's that's it. All I can think of. I I can't drip into her, you know, really dissect her mind and really think what, what really intrigues her. You know, the reason I ask you that is because <laughs> earlier on you said that because things are old, you know, like they're no good. And the concept of bringing flowers, this is something in the West that we've been taught for some time. It's, yeah. it's old. And what it really is, is a male all making an offering like a sacrifice of income on something called conspicuous consumption which is to say you spent money on something completely useless and foolish that will offer pretty much no value and so it's a sacrifice to her which really puts her above you in the hierarchy oh right like you made an offering twice well i'm pretty sure she didn't see it like that <laughs> but you you had no logic on why you did it you just did it because that's what other guys do and earlier at the start of the show you said you know things that are old or well no i did it because my my dad said do it and uh and your dad's old yeah and uh and these tulips were beautiful they were really really beautiful <laughs> oh my gosh they were said beautiful. these tulips were beautiful yeah so the jabrizi sends in the trash emoji i think he's now at a baller alert <laughs> oh man he's into the trash yeah. emoji good lord oh my gosh yeah do you believe that you're respected among men like when you're among men they look at you like you know um, he's a guy we should follow absolutely um yeah my yeah my colleagues my brothers, everybody, okay. every yeah, everybody that sees me and they yeah, absolutely. That's what's up. And do you you don't think your woman would ever cheat on you? I don't. I am. Um, how can I put this? English, um, preferably. Huh? English is preferred. Yes, I'm just trying to to. Uh, mm -hmm aggregate the best words um so 
if she were, that's on her. I can't control her. You damn right but about that. I still love her till I still love her until that happens. Let's say that. Let's just put it put it as that. Oh, you gonna stop? You gonna stop loving her when she she let somebody else smash? Oh yeah, she has somebody. She she loves somebody else. Oh, it's it's over. No, like what if that. she doesn't love? Him? By the way, if you try not to hit the table, it's kind of messing up oh, your sorry, sound sorry, quality. Sorry, sorry. Um, but what if she doesn't love the other guy? What if she just lets him smash real quick? Oh no, it's it's still the same. I don't know, but for a guy, it's different. You know, when you when I you thought see we were the same. When another you man even touch your woman oh your woman you gotta throw that away you misogynist not 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 to even say it like that but you you you, you can't <laughs> you you can't you can't have it you know so so it's just, different just between it, guys and put girls it very like insane there right now it's, right, it's almost ahead. like toys you know it's like when your friend comes over and like oh bro you play with my toys yeah okay okay then he tells like hey put that down it's my favorite toy you know just don't mess with that one. That one's cool. Then you you go downstairs and get like some something to eat, some Sour Patch Kids. Now I know I love Sour Patch Kids. He's up here banging the toy, stretching it apart, beating it up. Now, <laughs> now not he only, banging the toy, stretching it apart. Now not only are y'all not good friends no more, you see him really, really different. Now you're like, oh no, it's over. It's over. Your friendship is done. Done. <laughs> he gets your toy, start banging it and stretching it apart. And stretching it apart? Oh, shit. No, no it's done. Oh, shit. You got to wrap, wrap it up. No, no, it's it's over then. Do you think that if you cheated on your lady, she would uh, take you back or take, stay in the relationship with you? She has, yeah. You said she has? Yeah. Oh, you, you already cheated on her? Yeah. <laughs> right here, boy. Yeah. We got one here. That's what's up, bro. Tell yeah. me about that. That's what's up. Um, I told you I'm an honest guy. Um, it was probably about um almost a year in uh the relationship. Okay. Um, I was uh I was in New York. She okay. was she was here. Right. And uh yeah, it was just a one night thing. What did the and actually what did... It was uh with a uh old student friend. Oh, uh, like a friend from Berkeley. Yeah. That's what's up, white girl. No, no, she was Indian. Indian? Yeah. Did she ever at any point think you were Indian? <laughs> no. <laughs> Did she tell her parents, like, yes, he's he's Indian? No. Okay, no. that's what's up. That's no. what's up. You got a little Indian no. thing. Which, it was a skinny Indian, right? Did she think I was skinny? No, I said well, she was skinny. Nah. Nah. She Bro, I listen to me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reveal this to you because since we're close. Um when I was at Berkeley, there was this uh, Indian chick named Priyanka, and she was a little bit on the thicker side. You know, I'm going to go out on a limb and admit this to you. She was overweight. She was gorgeous in the face. You know, them Indian shorties, they got the long, pretty hair. You're me. She had that long, jet black, pretty hair, cute face, but she was for sure overweight. But, you know, I was fresh out the ghetto, and I figured, you know, I might as well max this out, you know, add a notch to the belt, you know, say I had one of them red dots. So I had went ahead and tried it out, and i don't like fat women that's that's what i discovered i don't like fat women how about you no she wasn't she wasn't fat but no she, she was fat keep it real with you. keep it real with your boy keep it real with your boy man she was fat she was bruh she was fat to, man to, to the she was like, fat I, bruh no no she wasn't like bruh she was fat like, bruh. um we went to um uh i forget i forget um uh some beach I all right so so you saying she wore, she, wore, she wore a full bathing bathing suit and she looked hot was it a one piece or she, two I, piece? I think, I think the problem was is that she was more heavier than me i think that <laughs> <laughs> i think that was a problem she was heavier than you i told you that earlier I with, huh? when you was lying about your weight bro i told you earlier <laughs> shit um okay was she wearing a one piece or a two piece a two piece okay fair enough yeah. all right that's what's up yeah okay Okay, so you end up smashing. Yeah, I was there and for, dashing. Yeah, I was there for uh, a week. You was hitting it the whole week. I think, I think a whole week. No, I think it was just no. We had sex two nights. Yeah, that's what's up. You did it the first time, and then you was like, "If I'm wrong, I don't want to be right," and then did it again. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you get busted or you came clean? Oh, what did, did I? Oh, wait. Did, oh, did I get? Bu- <laughs> I thought you <laughs> I thought you said, did I get busted or did I come clean? Oh, OK. Nah, oh. nah I ain't getting that detail, oh, my like, boy. Oh, we ain't okay. getting that All detail, right. bro. This is wait, very, wait, did you, very, you hit it wrong? <laughs> You hit that wrong? Keep it real. He wants did to you, know all wait, the hold details. Did you hit that wrong? <laughs> did you hit the Indian girl thick? raw? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, no, I got busted. She she uh, she texted me when I was somewhere else, and she saw that. Of course, I saved her save her contact and everything. Same old, same tale as old as. Early 2000s. Oh, so the, you know? the Indian girl sent you a text and you were with your Asian chick and the Asian chick saw the text. Yeah. Yeah. She nosy as hell. Yeah. Tails. <laughs> yeah. Uh, tell me this, though. Did you hit the Indian chick raw? No. No. Oh, you used a condom? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Congratulations. That's good for you. I'm happy. To- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm happy to hear that. Mm-hmm. So um, do you believe that men and women are equal? Absolutely. Okay, so we're equal, we're the same. That means the same thing, yes. Okay, so why is it that you could cheat on her and get away with it, but she can't cheat on you and get away with it? Well, got him. That's got him. No, that's that's got up him. to her. That's up to her. But you said earlier, and I remember this distinctly, because yeah. to observe to observe attentively is to remember distinctly. Shout to Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, I remember this. Because you said that, you know, as a guy, you just can't see. As a guy, you know, you just have your toys when you're a little boy and somebody gets your toy and stretch it out. And you said that like that was different for women. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. So I was able to convince her that it was just nothing. Is that oh, you hit her with, college? You hit her with some, gr- right? some game? Huh? You hit her with some game? Not really much game. Boy, I, you're sleazy. Boy, you're sleazy. No, I, I didn't have to convince much. Actually, no, I had to convince at all. I just had to tell her basically, basically the, the truth, which which it was. What was we were, the truth? We were friends in college. Uh huh. Everyone knows what friends in college means. Just nah, that bro, friend like, that you didn't have mean? sex with. You know. <laughs> oh, you didn't, you didn't smash in college. No, no. Are you late? No. Yeah, yeah. You see exactly. <laughs> and so. <laughs> And so, you know, you come out and see each other years later and see you guys. Wow. You still look good. I still look good. Oh, you making money now. Oh, I'm making money too. Okay. Uh, well, let's we just, have to have sex. Yeah. Now. Let's just enjoy each other. That's what's up. And so that's what it was. And now if she cheats on me, I wouldn't be such as kind as her because that's how I react to things. How you react to things? That's all up to you, boo. Bro, you be scamming like all a motherfucker. Up to you. Shout out to Jabrizi. He writes, "How you in New York, land of the models, and all from around all the world, and you pull a big girl, bruh." Well, everyone's big to me. I'm fairly small, so. Bro, why you try to lie and say you was 180 at the start? Because I'm uh, self confident about uh, self self. Self self conscious. Yeah, self conscious about my weight. That's why. Yeah. Fair it, enough. I appreciate your honesty. Yeah. Fair enough. Like you just thought you could just fool a motherfucker. Yeah. Like I was a blind son bitch, huh? That's so what's you up. told me say so you you box with it. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. He, he knows exactly my weight. <laughs> yeah, for sure. With the jacket on. Oh yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. No problem. <laughs> Got you. Okay. Now tell me this. Will you cheat again? No. No. I I saw. Um, when you see like your woman cry, um, she was crying. That's immature. Yeah. Yeah. When you see a woman cry, she tried um, to guilt you into not cheating. No. When you see a woman cry, (laughs) um, it really, really, um, it, it, it adds a level of shame, um, to you. Um, you ain't feel shame when you were smashing though. Yeah, because you're like it. Well, first of all, you're in a whole nother city, so it seems like you're in a whole nother world. So what? This nigga is that a whole nother world? <laughs> what if you go to New another? New York city is a whole again? nother world. It is though. But what if you go to another city? Huh? What if you go to another city again? Oh, when do I go to all the cities all the time? Yeah. 
you don't you don't be feeling tempted. Oh no, I love her. No. So you love your girls, that means you don't be ever feeling tempted. No, no, no. No. Your girl not, don't not watch. I don't think I honestly don't think that your girl is subscribed to me on YouTube. So just keep it real. She what? Right. I don't think your girl is subscribed to me, so you can keep it real right oh, now. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What, I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm actually telling you the truth. I'm not subscribed to you either. I'm telling you the, the fucking truth. All right, <laughs> let, let me ask you this, bro. So what is your your favorite kind of woman? Like if you could paint a woman with a paintbrush and say, I want to have this color hair, this color eyes, this color skin. What oh, Olivia like? Munn. Is that the girl from the Hunger Games? No, Olivia Munn. Uh, let me pull that up. She was, uh, she recently has uh, cancer. Um, so I'm so sorry about that. Um, if you're watching, if you're listening, my heart goes out to you and fa you and your family. Um, but, uh, she was in X-Men, uh, I forget which one it's called. Um, but she's known for the face is cool. The face is cool. The yeah. hair is cool. Is she yeah. she's mixed? half Chinese? Yeah. yeah she's, she's white and Chinese. Mixed. Yeah. Yeah, that yields pretty faces. The body is never there, but the face is, is often there. Yeah. Yeah, she's a cute little thing. She's yeah. she's oh she was in Magic Mike as well. Okay. I'm a, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know like a, a thousand percent. I did not watch Magic Mike, bro. But like yeah, th I, thanks for that reference. Yeah. <laughs> you can say she was pretty, in Magic no, Mike. Actually, no, it wasn't good. Yeah, yeah, bro. No. You need to you watch that with your girl. No, I actually watched it alone. I was talking with that. I'm actually a, a great fan of cinematography. So, wait, Magic Mike was with the white ball was a stripper, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure one more time. Magic yeah. Mike was when the the white ball was, was stripping his clothes off on a strip stage with a stripper pole. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and you watched that Dolo by yourself? By myself, in daylight. And I have floor to ceiling windows, so I always have the windows up. So, yeah. So when you were scrolling through Netflix, did they like recommend that to you, or no? At the time, it wasn't. It was on Netflix. I think I ordered it. Yeah, I did order it. Oh, so I went out and paid for it. You went. You out. <laughs> Actually, I woke up that day. I Go. said, "You know what? Uh -huh. It's Magic Mike Day." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sir, that, uh, I think I'm gonna have to ask you to leave on that note. <laughs> I think our interview here is, is now concluded. Do you have any closing words for the people? Oh, um, shit. Everybody, um, control yourself, uh, love every single day, even if it's a good day or a bad day, just enjoy it because you never know when your last day would it become that's it shout to uh jabriz he writes more quick please make this a series the mind of a simp this is hilarious y'all <laughs> interaction is too funny it's funny as hell because we complete opposites this nigga out hell watching magic mike man like the god it, nigga didn't pay 3.99 to watch it too that's crazy actually at the time it was like 14 dollars you know <laughs> <laughs> bro that shit was 14 dollars at the time yeah like, uh, bro, what the you, fuck? You ordered it off of uh, TV. It was 14 bucks. All right, keep it real with your boy. Have you ever had any bisexual thoughts? Uh, no, no, not no, no, bro. Keep Never. it real with your boy. No, I, I, I can't be more real with you, <laughs> bro. All right. Never. Have you ever accidentally kissed a guy? My brother. In the mouth. By accident. In, in the mouth. Oh, when he was a baby. Yeah. <laughs> you start laughing like that, bro. <laughs> bro, why you start laughing like that? My brother that? was like, like, was like one. Okay, bro. Like, oh my gosh, you're so cute. <laughs> um, shout to Jacob. He writes, "Peace to the saints." White man here. <laughs> <laughs> he says, "White man here." Hearing this guy say. Uh, the white feeling has left me feeling quite unsettled and possibly <laughs> traumatized. You the real big homie, bro. <laughs> 
You've unsettled this man in his whiteness. Oh, God. That's good. Yeah, right? Everybody needs to be shook up? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's good, man. Um, w- When you were watching Magic Mike, uh, were you fully clothed? <laughs> I have my pajamas on. <laughs> yeah. Pajamas were on. Flip-flops were on. Well, I always keep my... Was your drawers on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have my boxers on. Were you watching it by yourself or with another nigga? By myself. <laughs> you sure you wasn't watching with another Red nigga? Bull. And I had um I had China Go Go coming. Bro, so, you sure you wasn't watching with another nigga that was dressed up in a Boy Scout uniform? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I'll tell you why why I watched that movie. It's because Olivia Munn is in that opening scene and she's naked. That's oh, why was I she was that she movie. was she was it really her though? Yes, yes, it was her. Yes. And I, but I thought she had more of a role in that movie. So okay. that's why I watched that that okay. right you're, there. you're you're regaining some dignity right now oh, but yes. uh, the hunger games girl too i think she might be actually just pure white but to me she kind of looks like a hoppa like she's a little half asian half white um you know who i'm talking about the girl that was in um uh the main the main character right in hunger games yeah yeah with blonde hair yeah, yeah i don't know if she i don't think she's a natural blonde but yeah shorty right there you, you don't like that piece no no. She looks like um, she looks like an average Dane, like like you know what I mean. Like when you wake up to her in the morning, she looks like you know, you're going to get get, get she, coffee and she she's goes, right. She's she go, regular. She can go grab groceries too. Like she she really not would be spotted as a celebrity. Hold on, know? let me let me make sure I'm talking about the right <laughs> girl, all. bro. Let me make sure I'm talking about the right girl. Um, let me get her name. Make sure I'm because I feel like you might be tripping right now. Let me see what other movie was she in. No, she was in a lot of movies. I just can't remember her she, name. I can't remember. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence. Yes. Yeah. She's an average Dane. Oh, my God. Damn. So she regular as hell, huh? Yeah. Ugh. Damn. Oh. She regular as hell. That's crazy. Yeah. You ever been with a black girl? Half. Half black. Half black. Yeah. You ain't went the whole way, though, huh? No, I've never been with that. It's because where I grew up, I've been... All of my schools, I was I was the only black kid, and it was all white kids and maybe two Asian kids. Every I've been only seen around the same faces. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it was really hard to get attracted to <laughs> to something else that I wish I'm only seen. Do you like just unrelated to race though? Do you like big booties, uh, regular size butts, or or small ones? Oh, it it really doesn't matter. Is what really matters to me. Is the face the really face matters. is everything you have a big ass, small ass, boobs, no boobs, half a boob. You know, it just matters. If, is your if you are fucking beautiful, that's all that matters to me. Then I would skip down the street with you. That's that's really it. But if you're if you're just not, you know, you're just not quite there in the face. You better have an amazing personality. I tell you that. So the body really is not a factor for you. No, no. That's no. why you're cool with that fat girl because she the face was good. She wasn't fat. God damn, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. That's cool, man. That's what's up. I, I can dig it. Cool, man. Well, I um I pre you know, there's one thing that I like about you. There's one thing that I, I like and respect about you is that um you you were there and you didn't interrupt. Um you waited till you're acknowledged, and then we had a civil conversation. Uh, so I respect that. I hope that more men, more people can have civil conversations. So I appreciate you uh, coming and tapping in with, with oh, the Saint you. in the Center. All right, brother. Um, you know, uh, wishing you much success in your endeavors and in your marriage you. and you with your well. family. You well. Thank you. Pleasure to Thank meet you. you. All right. Until next time. All right. That was fun. Yeah. Have a good time? Yeah. Right. Yeah, you can. Okay. Um, so you just type on YouTube the Saint in the Center. Oh, the Saint in the Center. Yeah, YouTube.com slash Mark Place. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. And so uh, you, you'll be able to find it. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. 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 Th
Okay, folks. Um, I'll give you some time to send in any comments, questions. Um, if you have uh, comments, questions, feedback, happy to hear it. Give you guys a little bit of time to do that. Just going to wash my hands real quick. Saints, it has been a pleasure to have this time to fellowship with you all. Until next time.